Here's the starting lineup on the Fuso starting grid from pole position. It is Will Davis and Steve Owen for the Pepsi Max Ford Performance Racing Team. Red Bull Racing Australia, Win Cup and Dumbrell. Last year's Bathurst champions will share row number one. On the second row of the grid, position three, it's Craig Lowndes and Warren Luff. Will Craig enter the record books as a nine-time 500 winner today? Winterbottom and Richards. Stevie Richards got a pile of experience in endurance racing, including Bathurst victories, and it's Chaz Mostert and Dale Wood. Chaz has been a race winner this year. David Reynolds with a contract extension at Ford Performance Racing. He's with Dean Cando, who starts the car. Then it's James Courtney and Greg Murphy, the multiple Bathurst winner in the Fast Kiwi. That'll be a great combination. We've got Erebus Motorsport in there as well as a Nissan. So we've got two of the new brands in the top ten, Matty, and that's a great way to start the endurance season. Erebus Motorsport in particular are saying that they're so excited to be part of this, their first ever endurance race in Australian V8 supercars. That was 11 and 12 on your grid. 13 goes to our former Bathurst winners. Back together again, Garth Tander and Nick Perkat, Shane Van Gisbergen and Jeroen Bleekermolen in car number 97 for Team VIP Pet Foods. There's Coulthard and Yuld and Russell Ingle with Ryan Briscoe. This is Russell's 21st 500 start quite incredible. Tony D'Alberto has Johnny Reed for Team High Flex in car number three. David Wall with Chris Pither for Wilson Security Racing out of BJR. There's Lee Holdsworth with Craig Baird. James Moffat, a winner at our last event at Winton, sees the return of Taz Douglas, a former full-time driver, back in the seat. Rick Kelly and Carl Reiner with Tim Blanchard and Ash Walsh. That car, the bonnet flew off on car 17 throughout qualifying yesterday. It was a very scary moment. Jonathan Webb has German ace Mark Lieb in his corner. Michael Caruso has the Kiwi Daniel Gaunt alongside him for the Norton Hornets. That car will start from pit lane. Stephen Johnson returns to V8 Supercar Racing in a Mercedes with Maro Engel, while Scott Pye has Paul Morris. Alex Davison with Johnny McIntyre and the rear of the grid goes to Dean Fiore and Matt Halliday. Yeah, and here we are right down on the front of the grid. Uh, he comes, you see Paul Dumbrell doing a couple of burnouts as he comes down here to the thing that'll be getting that temperature into the rear tyres. And Pete, I don't know if you can have a look down oh, here yeah, behind me. me this is the start line now. Right here in front right of me back. is Mark Dutton. Four. This is, three this is Paul Dumbrell's engineer, back. he's Mark, he's talking one to Paul now, five, and he's going to bring him right up onto the line, listen to this. Keep it edging, Harper, keep it coming, keep it coming, mate. A little Very bit more, important we've got to get those front wheels more. right up keep on the coming, line. I can't give an inch. Perez, you're down the back there somewhere? Yeah, Laka, what we're watching for here now is as each of those cars lines up on the grid, the yellow flag marshal there will drop the flag, and you watch them cascade along in a minute as the cars get into position. There's the first couple down, here they come. Now their signal as they drop those flags and the cars are on position are to this man over here, Andrew, who has the green flag. When all the cars are gridded up, he will wave that green flag. All of the race engineers are looking his way at the moment because they want to see when that happens. They want to give their driver their heads up that the green flag is about to be waved. So with the last couple of cars now forming up on the grid, Andrew moves into position. He can see that all the cars are in their spot. He checks that they've stopped moving and watch for him to wave that green flag. Guys, we'll be underway. You got it, Barretts. Perfect timing. They're in it for the long haul this afternoon. As the oh. endurance season gets underway, Stephen Richards stuck. They're going to have to move their way around him, and they do so. But car number five of Richards and Winterbottom has gone right back throughout the field. And a good start from Paul Dumbrell. So he's got the jump on the pole sitter, Stevie Owen. Through turn two and three. Up to four now, unleashes them onto the back straight. Still pushing and shoving and diving for positions. Taz D Douglas finds his way around the outside on turn four. Wow, how's that for Stephen Richards? And it looked like the lights went well and truly out for Stephen on the start there. He probably had to use the auto start. Up the inside there is Greg Murphy. Cold tyres. They're exploring the track. They've got full fuel. Tyre pressures are down. Brake temperatures are down. But while all that's going on, you've still got to try and make track position as you can. That was unbelievable. Steve jumped. It was very similar to Tanders yesterday. But they all got around, which was very fortunate. He's going to come in. They're going to pit him straight away. That's the word we're hearing. So car number five enters pit lane. That's smart. Because he's gone to the back of the queue and he's in Trouble Street back there anyway. 
So bring him in, tick one of the stops off, take him out of the traffic sequence and let him get clean laps. I totally agree. And, th and this part is about thinking on your feet. This, the whole strategy of this is so important. Same for Davison. Johnny McIntyre behind the wheel of the gel win forward. So first time around, Paul Dumbrell has the lead over Steve Owen. So they've switched places from the starting grid. Some big changes year on year by comparison to when you've watched us before with endurance racing. There's no water brakes in the car for 2013. There's no fuel trim in the cars for 2013, nor can they alter the rear roll centre in the stops, which is something that the engineers and the drivers discuss and the mechanics implement. These things will have a profound impact on the way in which this race unfolds. When the green light is activated on the left-hand side of the interior of the windscreen of the driver's cars, you will note that the co-drivers are in the hot seat. The same goes for our ticker along the bottom of your screen. The green dot indicates the co-driver's in control. So a 111-1 for Paul Dumbrell. We know that car number one has been super fast throughout qualifying. What he'll want to be doing is getting into a rhythm nice and early so he can hold off Steve Owen. So look at this on the left-hand side of your screen. Stevie Richards, the Pepsi Max FPR Ford crew stuck. That was on board with Dean Canto in the Bottle Falcon, Falcons. He just went straight by. And as we said, very lucky to get away with that. Watch this. There it is. It took one jump. It's bogged. It actually turned itself off. As Neil said, you've got to get the auto start, get it cracking again. And that's a really good effort from Andrew Thompson in car 47. And he only had a split second to make a move to the left and miss that car that was stationary in front of him. He did so, did so very well. There he is, position number seven. Teams can program the auto start, so if that happens, and we're only assuming that's what's occurred with Stephen, but it's both pedals, clutch and accelerated to the floor, cracks the starter and the thing lights up and away he goes again. We're on board here with Luke Yulden. Although it was smart for them to come straight in and get that pit stop done, which, as I said, thinking on your feet in these races is all important, but it has dumped 23 positions. So don't take that away. It's still a long way back from where he should have been. So a bit of a gap from Greg Murphy back to Thompson and then the single file freight train. There's that gap I'm talking about. Here comes Thompson. So the two lead cars at the moment are trading sector splits almost identically. So both Dumbrell and Owen are almost exactly aligned. So over that curb, there at turn seven, that's 200 kilometers an hour after the big fast left. Over the curb on the right, break the car down to Dandenong Road. Dandenong Road is Princess Highway. That's behind the Jim Beam sign you can see in the background. That's actually the Princess Highway, Dandenong Road, right next to the track at Sandown. It's a famous corner. It's been one of the most famous corners in Australian motorsport for many, many years. One of the things that a lot of people worked on in the warm-up session this morning was second gear drive traction. That's the rear tyres buzzing up particularly when there's a bit of fuel in the car and you haven't quite got the grip with nice new tyres. So in other words, when things are a bit heavy and you don't have all the security beneath you, what's your car like at that point? Because you'll race it a lot like that during the day. What are they like? For some of them, they've not been good enough. So they've worked hard on that in the warm-up. Quite a number of them have made changes to what we describe as the camber at the rear of the car, looking for some drive and sacrificing a bit of mid-corner stability in the juggle to make speed. Something was hanging off the back of stand at Perkett's car, wasn't it? I was just uh, checking out car three. Tony D'Alberto is the only main game driver who started. So the co-driver light's not on. You can see that hanging off the back of Perkett's car there. It's a little bit of the under tray at the rear of the car. The diffuser, the apron under the rear bumper's taken a whack and that'll be in the congestion in the first couple of corners. So they'll look at that at race control and assess whether they feel that needs to be uh, a mechanical black flag in order to remove any danger of it flying off the car. On board now with Canto behind Luff. The other thing, if you haven't been with us through the course of the weekend so far, this circuit right here has been resurfaced. 
coming onto the back straight, so it's a bit of a patchwork quilt, this racetrack. It's got a lot of old surface, it's got bumps, it's got a lot of character about it, and you can see the difference in the colour of the tar on so many of the areas of this track. Right now, there's a new section in the braking area. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's well and truly off. He's gone so deep at the exit of turn one here that he's ended up way along the fence down at uh, turn three, Daniel Gorn. Now keep in mind that Daniel and Michael had to start car 36. Look up in the background at turn one. Big lockup was the reason why Daniel fired through the paddock. Young Kiwi's been doing the New Zealand Super Touring Championship this year, also running in the Dunlop series in V8s. And there's the super slow-mo replay of the diffuser and the rear apron of the Holden Racing Team car looking pretty second-hand after a whack. So Daniel's toured the grass and make the tyres dirty. He's got to get his rhythm back now. And they started from pit lane because they had a faulty start, uh, starter motor wire with that car. We're going to stay with Dean Canto as he follows very closely Warren Luff. Stay with us, you'll hear some great action at 265 kilometres an hour up the back straight of Sandown. Okay, you can see Mark Winterbottom and Will Davidson both uh, watching intently the data screens here. Hey, Frosty, uh, I know that wasn't ideal, but there's some pros and cons to that scenario. You're running out of sequence, clean laps. You probably took away a little bit of your flexibility, but not all bad. Uh, no, it's not ideal. We obviously uh, had our plan in place, and when you stall off the line and go back 15 positions, you, you have to think on your feet. So four compulsory pit stops. We got one out of the way early. Uh, we're back on three-stop race now, so... But, safety cars, fuel in hand, all these strategic things that are going to play out. It's not ideal. You race at the front, you do the same as most, that's how you win the race. But now we're trying to backtrack a bit, change our plan a little, and who knows, might be kind to us, it might uh, might not, but that wasn't the plan at all to do that, so we'll fight back. All right, thanks for the heads up, buddy. Thanks, mate. Tom. So they started from fourth, they're now down in 27th position. They've got one of the four compulsory pit stops out of the way so that's our v8 viewer vote that we want for you right now can mark winterbottom and stephen richards win the race from there download the seven sport app go to v8supercars.com.au and let us know can they pull off a miracle the rest of the afternoon paul dumbrell leads the way the wilson security sandown 500.
Welcome back. We asked the question, can Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards still win this race after starting from the second row? But remember, Stephen Richards couldn't get the car away. They've come in and done one compulsory stop. They're now down in 26th. Almost 40,000 of you have had your say already. We'll continue to track that and see where it ends up in a few minutes' time. But we're on board here with Dean Cando, car 55, who's trailing Warren Luff and trailing him well. And in the meantime, car number two of Garth Tander and Nick Perkat have been ordered into pit lane. Mechanical black flag has been shown to this car with Nick Perkat driving for this. Loose bodywork under the rear but they can make that one of their four compulsory stops. Yeah, so they take the apron away there to completely clear it, secure it with some race tape and send him on his way, take the opportunity to dump more of the Sucrogen E85 in there, and away they go. Good work. Keep getting those good actors. But hang on. Now we're being told there, yes, they have been busted for speeding. Oh, so a pit lane penalty for speeding. Look at this. Greg Murphy against Dale Wood. That's oh! That's the replay of a little bit earlier. So it's all going on down the order here as well. This is Jack Perkins on David Russell. So a little tap and then a dive bomb on the inside. And Jack goes up to ninth. So that's a disaster for Garth Tanner and the Holden Racing Team for car number two. His mouth will be drying up a bit at the moment. So it's a combination of things that are not flash. The... Garth Tander, mate, um, I just spoke to Mark Winterbottom and uh, he said uh, early pit stop in a four-stop strategy is not the ideal scenario for them, for you guys. Uh, no, it wasn't ideal either. We had bodywork. Um, Dalberto crashed into the back of us at turn four on the first lap, so there's nothing surprising there. But uh, we, had to, we had to pit, so um, we did, and then Nick got Nick for pit lane speeding as well. So um, not a great start. I mean, we didn't start where we should have, and that's my fault, but uh, the first ten laps of this one haven't gone real to plan either. All right, long day, mate. Good luck. What's fascinating here in this battle on screen at the moment is the battle of the co-drivers. It's unbelievable. Look how tight it is between Luff and Canto at the end of the back straight. There's hardly a car length in it when they get to peak speed, which is 266 kilometres an hour. And this gentleman is the battle of the stunt drivers because <laughs> Warren Luff is the stunt driver five to six days a week at Movie World on the Gold Coast. And Dean Cato's got a stunt driving school that he partners with Lukey Yulden. So they should be doing this on two wheels then. <laughs> with one or two donuts along the way. That's not the objective this afternoon. I reckon it'll feel like stunt driving at the moment too because they're both pressing on very hard. You can see the difference in where their pace is. You said earlier in the telecast about guys concentrating on the exit drive. The exit drive of the Red Bull car is better than Dean Cato's Bottolo Falcon. The interesting thing, guys, that's come in Car two, after that stop there for Percat, is going to be right on the cusp of his 54 laps. So he may not quite make that. And we haven't discussed that yet. So um, the race breaks down into two thirds, one third in terms of the way in which the drivers have got to share the time. It's another factor when they're creating a strategy play for the race. So uh, nobody can do more than 107 laps and the other guy can't do any fewer than 54. So that's another thing that we have to keep an eye on. And sometimes managing that a lap either way, it sounds simple, but it's not in the heat of the battle. So what they don't want to do is have to bring him in very close to that window and have to stick more fuel in, but leave the driver in, because then 
you, you're compelling yourself to having to keep the co-driver in for another stint. Exactly. So if he doesn't make 54, then what you said is another effective stint. You've got to leave him in there. These two Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport Commodores of uh, Paul Morris and Matt Halliday are having a juicy little battle right down the back of the field. Car 80 and 88. And there's Mark Lee, the German ace, driving with John O. Webb. So there is Stephen Richards' car five. Now, position 25 at this stage of the game. Still just under 150 laps to go on our V8 viewer vote. Even Stevens. So, Frosty, the good news is you got half a chance. That's what the viewers think. Thanks for having your say. V8supercars.com.au slash vote or the 7 Sport app. We'll get an update on Stephen's time. That lap time through then was an 11.4 so it hasn't got great pace either uh, we're not seeing evidence of the ripping pace that we saw yesterday no surprise in a 500k race and the temps up today uh, quite warm quite humid here at the moment and considerably more wind from the north northeast yesterday was virtually calm conditions through the sprint for the grid races and qualifying so at the moment the two red bull racing australia commodores are under a bit of attack in this battle group, it's Dean Canto trying to chase down Warren Love. And further up the field, it's Steve Owen hounding Paul Dumbrell. As you're on board here with Ryan Briscoe, the pilot this weekend with Russell Ingle in the super cheap auto Commodore. A break from Sandown and back with more on 7 Sport. Seven Sport Mega Wall keeping an eye on everything that's happening here at Sandown. On the track in race control, pit lane, and of course a whole stack of cameras on board as Fabian Coulthard there from Lockwood Racing looks on at Luke Yulden who's in position number 12. 
Paul Dumbrell, our race leader by 5.6 seconds. We go on board too with Luke. Just while you're crunching numbers there, Matt, the shot that we had at the end of the back straight of them clobbering that uh, witch's hat there. That, yes, in fact, there you go. There you go. I was about to say, when those cones get moved, then typically race control reacts. So there you go. It was uh, Luke Yulden that gave it a clobbering and laid it down. In fact, it's got a couple of mates up there gasping. So they'll need to be resolved. And that's the safety car that gives a few people an opportunity to get their fueling done now. Andrew Thompson was first there. He was already in pit lane. Mm. So the problem when those hats lay down is it exposes the fixings, the bolts that secure them to the concrete pad below. Now, the other thing is I picked up over the course of last evening, there are about a dozen or so rims from the right-hand side of cars that have been copping quite a bang, and they've been warping the rims. We think that's happening at turn two. Let's listen. I need you on the brake and the clutch, please. Brake and the clutch. Sorry, mate, I don't know climbers are yet. It's going to have stacking now. Dumbrell in. And you're going to have Luff parked behind him in a second. Here we go. So we've got the stacking. We've seen this over the years. The teams choose to do this. There's less. It's the lesser of the two evils. So I was trying to explain. You did it for me. Thank you. So there's effectively less penalty to do that than there is to leave them out there. Another one there for the BJR team. This will help Tander and Perkat. There's bumping there between car 9 and 22. They're running into each other. Go, oh, sorry. He just missed it. He just missed that then. He should have gone. He would have got out in front of the HRT car and he's parked behind. So that's really hurt Luff. Now, I just meant to say car 2. They were saying Nick Perkat needed a two lap fuel saving to make that window. This, this is now fixed, so that's good news for them. Which that was never going to happen. No, it was never safe. Two laps of fuel. No way. We could just have to drive 30 seconds a lap slower. <laughs> Rare chaos on the radio. Yeah, go, 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 go. Cold side, make cold side. So behind the Petters STP Chrysler safety car is now Carl Reidler in the Jack Daniels Racing Nissan Altima. He's sharing with Rick. He's been on the radio talking about turning oversteer. What he means there is as he changes the direction of the car, it's the back that slides and disconnects before he gets to peak load. And that means he can't carry the pace that he wants through the corner. Very awkward to manage. It tends to hurt the rear tyre. It's an uncomfortable feeling to carry in a long race. This goes to the point that I made earlier about having a lack of adjustability in the behaviour of the car in the stop where normally we would have seen a bunch of little roll centre changes at the rear. We'll take a break while we sort all this out. They're coasting. It's Reindler, Dumbrell and Richards, the top three. More of the Wilson Security Sandown 500 in a tick. Thank you. 
safety car. What caused it? That just the cone across the top. <laughs> Welcome back. The STP Pettis safety car has left the scene and Paul Dumbrell is in charge here with Stephen Richards now behind him. So in all of that shuffle, car number five has regained track position, but he's out of sequence in terms of stops. Yeah, so Richards came in, remember, after the problem at the end of the first lap. They took the opportunity to squirt it full of fuel once more. So he's out of sequence, and as everyone peeled off to take their stop, then he vaults to the top of the queue. However, his fuel range only gets him as far as about, well, that was awkward for Tony Delberto. Pit lane speeding also for car number 80. So that's uh, a drive through for Paul Morris. PLP, pit lane drive through penalty. Just a reminder when we left you for that break, Carl Reindler was at the head of the field behind the safety car. He hadn't activated his pit stop and did so in the break. <laughs> down at turn nine then I held my breath. Someone was having a dive bomb. It's always a risky move down there. The other guy needs to see you in order to be able to get away with it. So, so Stephen, the point I was going to make, his fuel range gets him as far as about lap 45. What most of them are going to do though is they'll try and get their co-drivers to at least lap 55, yank them out and put the primary driver in the car, regardless of where they are in the fuel load. Out of all this, the thing that's really surprised me is Paul Dumbrell's performance being out of the car for a period of time. I mean, he is driving really well. He dominated that first part of the race. He's straight away back on it again. His fastest lap is about 0.5 of a second faster than anybody else at this point. He's done a 10-2. The next fastest car was Steve Owen, 10-5 early. Here's the wheels. Just... So this is Nick Perkat. They're jumping. Yeah, I think that one, it, the wheel is turning, but that looks like it's probably a gear selection. So when it does go in, as the gear is engaged, it tends to, when it engages the drive line, it tends to move the wheel like that. So I reckon they might get away with that one. And on the other side of the garage, loose bodywork for car number 22. So a mechanical black flag for car 22, the same as what happened earlier to car number two. And in comes Greg Murphy. Scaifey, I reckon you did right with that motor. Had a good chat to Frank Adamson, the category technical director, before the race about exactly that. And he was going to be lenient in instances where he felt this gearbox, when it was just selected and the wheel turned like that, he said, that's fine. Thanks, Lucko. Well done. So the guys now repair the left-hand rear corner. That's actually had a fair hit there. And that will have been in the restart phase. Safety cars always create that sort of opportunity. On you're trying to re remember who was there. Now, you know what happened? There was definite contact in pit lane. I don't know if it was that, that bad, but there was contact, I'm pretty sure, between Stevie Johnson in car number nine and Murph in that last round of pit stops. Drivers have to be careful where that witch's head hasn't been replaced because those bolts will be exposed up there at the top of turn five. Very fast. 
Craig Lowndes. I know pit lane stacking, pit lane queuing, it sends a shiver down your spine. Cost you dearly last year. First enduro race and it's happened again. Yeah, look, it is. It's, uh, it is disappointing. It is part of what the process is. If you've got two cars running close like what FPR have right now, um, it's always going to be a problem if you get a safety car. So for us, there is a bit of a gap now between car one and ourselves. So fingers crossed it won't happen again. But of course, uh, you know, it's not ideal, but it's ideal that it's at the start of this race and hopefully we've got time now to make it up. Oh, a little bit of trouble too, getting the car lousy. out of the box as well. Oh. Oh. Yeah, look, it's one of those. Actually, Lanza, you better take a look at this as well. That was Big Brett. Sorry about that. That was Andrew Jones down the inside of Warren Luff. And he gave it a, a, a fair rub at the way to the apex at turn one. Sorry, sorry, Brett. That was big moment there for Craig Lowndes. So that moves Andrew up to sixth place. And it's dropped Warren Luff down to tenth. It was a really late dive. I mean, he got up there, but also Warren, when he turned it in, didn't seem did. that was a late dive. That's Ritter and Pitha. You've got to be super careful at the end of that back straight. It's very bumpy. Here's the replay of what happened. It's Andrew Jones in the Team BOC entry. And he was up there, and then as he closed to the apex of the corner, he had to get the nose back out. And there wasn't room for the two of them in there. No surprise at the apex. And so Warren Luff, the victim in that one, and off in the grass. Here's the other angle. Luffy caught it, skipped across the gravel, makes the tyres filthy, so he not only loses position on the track, but he then spends the next lap or two trying to clean the tyres back up. Ooh, it's contact also with one of the Norton Nissans with and the VIP Commodore at the same time. And that happens when another car inserts back onto the racetrack and then shuffles everybody as they all find their pace again. And race control uh, investigating that incident between Cars 888 and Car 8, and that is Red Bull Racing Australia, Warren Luff and Car 8, Andrew Jones, Team BOC. Hey, you remember at the start I told you about what happened if we got a safety car right about here? Well, that happened. Remember it happened on about 21. So if we look at our graph again, the trajectory that the teams are on, they're coming down this lane down here, they've got to around about that 21, they've filled up with fuel, and they'll get to that now, so they, you know they do 42 laps on a tank of fuel, they'll get past that 54 that Neil was talking about. Very, very important, so they can flick their drives out. Mark Winterbottom, you remember, lap one. So he's come along here, he's come in, topped up the car on lap one. So he's looking like this, he's going to go all the way down here, but he's going to pull up short of 54 now, and he's going to have to send Richo back out to do more laps. Not the ideal scenario. And the reason they don't like it, thanks uh, thanks for that, Larko, is that uh, typically, and we're not uh, casting shadows on the co-drivers, but typically the regular drivers have got a little bit more pace because obviously they're in the cars all the time. They handle the variance and conditions a little better and we may get some weather later in the day. So strategically, they like to keep the A grader in the car for as long as they can. That's why what Mark said earlier about Paul Dumbrell is so impressive because he's really looking like a star at the moment. A 10-1 on the last lap. For Paul Dumbrell, fastest lap of the race, he's still blazing, Larko. Yeah, Neil, just a little ass covering uh, thing for Larko here, mate. That was, you're dead right. I wasn't having to go at Richo. Richo's one of the best out there. But the team set a plan and a strategy based around the lead driver being in when they want him to be in, and they're not going to be doing that. So Steve Owen is now hounding the rear of car number five. Remember Stephen Richards, as we say, out of sequence with these guys, and Stephen Owen, a former runner up at Bathurst. 2010 with Jamie Wincup, a winner of a Gold Coast 600 race the same year as well, and a two-time Dunlop Series champion as well. Now we've seen some FPR aggro this year between the factory cars and the Pottolo car, and we, what you need to do now is ensure that they don't get in each other's road. There's three, three of their cars, be real calm, three FPR Falcons in the top four cars. One of these are a big chance to win this race, so don't get caught up in anything strange. Yeah, just here in the Team High Flex garage with a very disappointed Tony D'Alberto. Yeah, really disappointed with that. Uh, you know, we had a stuck throttle in that race and Johnny had one yesterday in his race. So we thought we'd uh, fixed it overnight and it's a bit of a walk and shore problem um, up and down our group. But uh, just so disappointed because uh, we had all the goods today to deliver a, a solid result and um, now it's just nothing. I like Tony. Thanks. Yeah, it's hard to cop. So, a recurring problem throughout the weekend for Tony D'Alberto and Team Highflex. So, Paul Dumbrell now stretches his lead to 5.2 seconds over Stephen Richards. 
as this FPR 123 comes in search of Red Bull Racing Australia. Thirty laps completed in the Wilson Security Sandown 500 of 2013. Our figure, of course, is 161 laps in total, and this dogfight continues between Car Five and Car Six. And Mark Winterbottom would be getting a bit edgy. I, I would be too. I mean, you just don't need to have your cars running this close together. You know, everything gets hot, brakes get hot, drivers get frustrated. You end up having some drama. Just, and because they're out of phase, you might as well, if one car's caught the other, just change them over. Get on with life. You'll end up with the two cars, whoever's fastest, blazes on. So, yeah, anyway. Warren Luff, after that contact with Andrew Jones, has got a battle on his hands here with John McIntyre in car 18, which he's sharing with Alex Davison. And tucked right in behind there's Andrew Thompson in car 47 in the Erebus Motorsport Mercedes. They've had a much better run in terms of overall pace this weekend. And then in behind in car seven uh, is David Russell. He's sharing with Todd Kelly. So it looks like Warren's just out of whack a bit at the moment now as he finds his feet again. You see the queue that's formed behind. Taz Douglas is there as well in car number 360. And then it's Craig Baird, Porsche master in the Irwin Tools entry. Look at this. This is Bairdo in the break and uh, ends up with just left-hand side of the car in the weeds. And then because he's so shallow into the left-hander at turn five, which is 266 kilometer an hour approach speed, it ran wide into the dirt going down the hill. He managed to gather it back up, but not pretty. That little adjustment that you just saw on board the car there is an anti-roll bar adjustment. I think it was the rear that got a little tweaked, so the drivers are fiddling with their cars to make them nicer on the run. 
just with Tim Edwards at uh, Pepsi Max, keeping an eye on his three cars, which are going brilliantly at the moment, but they're almost going too well, Tim. They're getting pretty close, those three. That's the story of the last couple of years, really, isn't it? Which is not a bad problem to have, but uh, look, uh, Richo's only you know, two or three laps away from hitting because he's on a different strategy anyway. So um, obviously he's on pretty worn tyres now. So um, I think once he's out of the way, then I'm sure the other two will push on. Does it concern you that they could possibly trip each other up a little bit? They might get a bit too energetic about their jostling? Of course it concerns me, but, you know, they all know they're, they're, they've got a job to do, they, you know, and I trust them all. Um, yeah, they're going to push hard, but uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. All right, mate. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks mate. While they're in the middle of that brawl, Paul Dumbrell's making hay. He's got 9.4 seconds now, and he continues to be quicker in every sector of the racetrack. So just on this lap alone, in the mid-sector of the track, he was four-tenths quicker than these guys. And this is the other problem with this little race that's going on here at the moment. They're probably not doing each other favours in terms of lap speed. So they're making temp, and they're making stress. Exactly. If anything, they're also allowing... Dale Wood to buy into this as well. There he is in the background in the Wilson Security, Dick Johnson Racing Falcon. He's just looming into this slowly but surely. Yeah, it's a good pickup, Neil, and I don't think he understood what Paul Dumbrell's doing here. I mean, apart from the position he's putting the car in for when Jamie Winkup gets in a little later, uh, he hasn't actually spent a lot of time in the car. I spoke to him earlier this week. He said he's done about, you know, five, five of the test days, uh, maybe 150 laps, he said, during the course of the year in total, and he's just banged in and done the job. Now, I don't know what he's getting paid on that scale we showed you before, but he certainly deserves whatever he is getting, and it just shows you this guy and guys like him will have a long, long career doing this. Thanks, Larko. The lead for Paul Dumbrell now out to 10.7 seconds. So remember, this was the incident that we saw earlier between car eight, Andrew Jones, and car triple eight, Warren Luff down at turn one on our V8 viewer vote. Let us know what you think. This is going to be investigated post-race. So you can have your say about this one, v8supercars.com.au slash vote. Or just log on to the Seven Sport app and we've got big trouble here for That's Ash Walsh. That's a biggie. Big, big trouble. So he's made the fence. This is the car that the bonnet flew off yesterday. He was an unwitting victim. This will be another safety car. It's on standby. The pit lane immediately reacts. Michael Massey in the foreground with driving standards observer Cam McConville alongside. That's a very big incident. So, look at this. Down the back straight here, 260 kilometres an hour. He tries to lock it up, but Ash Walsh goes slamming into the fence. That's a big one. So even when they get the speed off the car and make a gear change or two in some cases up here, they're still doing 185 kilometres an hour. It actually tagged Craig Baird as well. He rubbed the back of Baird on the way, so Craig was having a skate. Here it is again. They're both really shallow. Makes the corner sharper, and Ash can't stop it and turn it. That's what it looked like in real time. Not a lot of think time when it all goes wrong. That's a tonne and a half, the best part of 180 kilometres an hour into that wall. This is uh, it's going to hurt FPR because both the Pepsi Max cars are in together, so we're going to see queuing. So it's going to work out nicely for Dumbrell. Richards will get serviced, but Steve Owen's going to have to sit there and burn. That's the one. Car six is the one that's really been affected unbelievably by this. Yeah, and and Richo, oh, well, he's got to stay in the car, doesn't he? Yep. So there goes car 55. So Dean Canto gets out ahead of ahead of both of them. All of them, yeah. And meanwhile, they must car have six is still waiting, waiting, waiting. Now he can go in. Triple eight staying out. Oh, it's because they had to put so much fuel in car five because he only came in at the end of the first lap. But that's what we're saying about the order. If that had, that order had changed before this in incident, then they would have come in and actually got that right. So, yeah, so that's hurt both of them now. They're both buried. Good news for Dean Cando though, so he's uh, made made good gains out of that. So they come out way down the field. So as you heard Tim Edwards say, he was almost in for what was his regular stop. So that's why he had to put so much fuel in it. Dino doing some sign language. 
I think windscreen. Windscreen and also make sure it had a clear exit. And this was a very big one down that back straight there for Ash Walsh. 25-year-old Victorian on debut here in the main game. So they left Warren Luff out there, so they didn't want to play the queuing game here, so they're taking advantage of the fact that Pepsi Max Ford Performance Racing had to go through that. Our viewers pointing the finger at Andrew Jones for that incident at Turn 1 with Warren Luff. As I mentioned, that one to be investigated post-race. Continue having your say on v8supercars.com.au or the Seven Sport app. Welcome back. Safety car still in control. Warren Luff car 888 is the first car in the queue. Elected not to stop as car 17 battered and bruised and torn apart after that big crash up there at the exit of turn 6. Ash Walsh has been taken out of the car and they're now just yeah, cleaning up the area. Rihanna? Yeah, well, uh, we get ready to go racing again. I thought I'd just come up here and enjoy what is the best seat in the house. I'm here at the V8 Supercars Paddock Club, and this could be you at any of our V8 Supercars event. You can enjoy premium hospitality. The V8 Supercar drivers come in and say hello throughout the weekend, and this runs at all of our V8 Supercars events around the country. So while Beretta and Larko are just running up and down pit lane, I might just relax and enjoy, and you can head to the website v8supercars.com for all the information. Scafey, Neil, I don't know about you guys, but just watching what's evolved here, I reckon this has really, really played into the hands of Wing Cup and Dumbrell because Dumbrell's out there setting lap times far beyond what I think 
wink up wood over his other A game drivers when they get in their car. So he's in there with all the B drivers. He's making great inroads. A lot of them are still in the cars out there. So I actually think this is going to play out really, really well. Um, the guy I want to try and grab in here, because this is a bit of an odd one what happened here, because typically there's a rule with the double stacking. The car that's in front on the track gets first go into the pit lane. But in this instance, the car on the front of the track was the weakest strategy. So it's a bit of an odd one. And I can see um, Will Davo looking, um, mate... Uh, Clearly a little disappointed over here, which I uh, understand that's not the double stacking scenario that you were looking for. Oh, really, really peeved off, to be honest. So, shot ourselves in the foot there big time. So, anyway. Yeah, we're a bit surprised we thought you might have switched the Marine. I know it's not your decision on the track, because I know there's a rule, mate, with the car in front gets first go at the double stacking, but this instance, you were on the far better strategy. Oh, yeah. We were. But anyway, what can I say? Anyway, what can I say? All right, mate, thanks, Dave. I think we get the, uh, the drift of what's going on there. Yeah, clearly distraught uh, Will Davis in there. This is on board with Steve Owen, who's been talking about not being able to get the front of the car in like he would prefer, and also it won't drive properly off the corner, so he's been fiddling with the bars. <laughs> I've just stolen Scapey's thunder. I've just realised they're the notes that he's written listening to the same radio message. But uh, Now, the interesting thing for me about car 888 also with Warren Luff, and we talked about them not coming in and double stacking. There's no need to. Here he is. That gets him off the hook. Remember, he had contact with Andrew Jones at Turn 1, got buried. We talked about the fact that he was trying to scramble back. He gets it all back for free because all of his mates peel off into the pit lane to get some juice. They're fueled to get him into a position that could take him as far as lap 66. That's plenty to get him out of the car and get Craig Lowndes in the car. So they're just on a nice standard strategy here at the moment, leaving it that way. So Red Bull Racing Australia have gone in two different strategy directions. That avoids stacking and it also just amortises the risk across a couple of different little plays here. So we'll see how this works out in the battle between cars one and triple eight. And that battle between car eight and triple eight. 75-25, the viewer vote locks down. Fault for Andy Jones. Um, it was 90-10 when we saw it last time, so a heap of people from Albury must have got online to help Andy on that one. It's a safety car, so uh, Andy's on the phone, yeah, he's texting. Right. <laughs> Mate, it can wait. Um, There's Ash Walsh's car coming back in a very second-hand condition. So we'll get an update on uh, Ash. And that was a big one. Right here it was. That would hurt too. And fortunately, the tyre barrier has done the job up there, but make no mistake, uh, even with all the wonderful safety side intrusion and the belts and the seats and the tyres against the fence, it still hurts. Lights are out. We'll go racing this time. Oh, this is a difficult start for Luff. A very good start for Thompson. So Luff leads them away. Andrew Thompson's been right on the game in this opening stint. Two Mercedes Benz chasing down Warren Luff. Craig Baird is tucked in behind Thompson. Then it's Luke Yulden, Chris Pither, Carl Reindler. They elected not to stop last time around. Paul Dumbrell has already made the move on car 15 of Reindler, so Dumbrell goes up a spot straight away. Andrew Thompson, something of a quiet achiever, isn't he? Dunlop Series winner in 2011, had 11 wins in that season, and uh, he renews this acquaintance with Tim Slade. They were together at Stone Brothers Racing last year, seventh here, seventh at Bathurst. Uh, and remember, he did a very good job uh, at Team Vodafone and also a very good job in the Dunlop series. So he's got a big responsibility here at the moment. Oh, and a dive! Oh my, that was bad down the inside of Thompson. That was so close to making contact there. I was just about to say it's the best that we've seen the Mercedes-Benz E63 Meribus Motorsport run all year in second and third position at the moment, but Craig Baird almost under. He, he, he had a brake lock, he turned it in, and it was so close to unloading the car in front. In the Beardo's car, the Irwin car, it's got thanks down the side of it to celebrate National Tradies Day. It needs to have excuse me if he's going to squeeze down the inside of his teammate down at turn nine. <laughs> and then maybe thanks afterwards. <laughs> or sorry, depending on the outcome. <laughs> the mobile sign in. <laughs> be running out of space <laughs> for the apologies. <laughs> Beardo Apology Racing. 
The board is showing that uh, pit lane penalty is being issued for car number three, Johnny Reed. Remember the team Highflex car, last time we saw it was in the garage with a stuck throttle problem. Oh. Oh. I don't think we've seen the end of the action up here. And he has a go, doesn't he? Craig there. So that's Luke Yulden tucked in behind the Lockwood entry. There's Paul Dunbrell. He had clear air until recently, so now he's got to do it in traffic. We'll see whether that pace still applies when he's got to gulp in the hot air from in front and he has to deal with the traffic. Car number 21 right in front of him is the Kiwi, Chris Pitha. They're going to bring uh, Johnny Reed in as a result of that pit lane penalty. A good margin here, two seconds for Warren Luff over Andrew Thompson. So Dumbrell has a look, goes on the inside of Chris Pitha. Nice job. Up another slot. Oh, oh, a little bit little, wide. A little bit wide, that one. But he needs to stay there now. If he stays on the inside, he'll have the right of way for the following corner. So he did a good job, though he couldn't quite slow it enough. He ran wide off the back of the curb at turn one, but he was still down the inside. So effective manoeuvre in the end. Up to fifth now. Here's the view out the rear of Dumbrell's car. Remember, he started second on the grid with Steve Owen next to him in pole position. And the curse of a pole sitter continues at the Sandown 500. It's only been won once back in 1996 from pole. Craig, uh, Craig Lowndes and Greg Murphy took victory that day. Currently, car number six is down in 22nd position. And Steve Owen behind the wheel, Will Davison in the garage, and he's not happy. Matty, great to see this guy walking down pit lane, Ash Walsh. That was a, a heck of a ride you went through. The main thing is you're OK. Yeah, it's obviously not the way that I wanted to start my main game career. Um, you know, we, we, had, we had a pretty good race up until then, and I was looking forward to getting out and giving it back to him in one piece. But, yeah, obviously, uh, when I was a little bit keen in uh, one of those moves, so pretty disappointed with what happened. OK, so what exactly happened? Um, basically, I was following um, the Irwin car up the inside of one of the Nissans and uh, broke where he broke, but it bounced funny on the way into the corner and either locked the tyre or, I don't know, like it's understeered. And as soon as I've uh, understeered wide, it's gone into the grass and it's just a passenger from there. And an incredible impact. It hit hard. It did hit, hit very hard, yes. All right, mate. We wish you all the best. Rest up. Thanks very much. Thanks, Brett. Had a big crash in the wet at Spa a few years ago in Formula Renault, 200 kilometres per hour. And and this one right up there with it, especially when he goes back and has a look at the data and sees the figures that were tracking as he went sailing into that wall. Good news is Ash is up and about and we'll see him again at Bathurst and the Gold Coast. It's his first experience in a V8 supercar uh, here at Sandown. It takes a little bit of learning this track, as they all do, and that'll be a lesson that he carries for a while. He'll understand not to get trapped like that in that position at Turn 5 again. So the defending champions, Craig Lowndes and Warren Luff, currently leading the race. Elected not to stop last time around. This battle continues for positions at the Wilson Security Sandown 500.
So 45 laps now done and dusted in the Wilson Security Sandown 500 of 2013. Our leader is Warren Luff in car 888. But here's Paul Dumbrell continuing to move forward. So he's the first of the cars in the queue to have stopped twice. And he gets around Craig there. So that's right, Matt. The guys that stopped on lap 34 for the safety car basically have got a conventional race now with two more stops to make to get to the end, which will mean they come in around lap 80 next time. The current leaders, Warren Luff, who chose not to do that with the choice not to stack, he'll come in around lap 67. So they're about 12 to 13 laps apart in terms of strategy there. The Nissan and the Mercedes, because they're using a little bit more fuel than the Ford and Holden, they'll be a little bit harder for those guys to make that 79 or 80 target. Steve Owen has dropped down to 23rd now. He was reporting that he was taken off the road and was pointing the finger at Greg Murphy. They're also bringing Stephen Johnson in uh, this lap, staying in the car. Car number nine is in the pit lane now for this motorsport. This is Dean Cando, we're riding with him. And we're looking at the back of Dale Wood's car, who on corrected positions on the pit smart computer looks good as well because he's on the same strategy as Paul Dunbrell. It's a little bit early to start, it's like calling elections early. It's a little bit early, early to start sort of calling how this unfolds later uh, in the race, but uh, they look good already. Now, here's the issue that you spoke about, Matty. Well, pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty clean cut. That election was pretty easy to call early, though. <laughs> it's over and done by about five o'clock. You don't want to call this one. Still 114 laps to go. And the reason we say that is because at the moment, the way the strategies work with the way the safety cars intervene in the race is played, uh, the, the complexion as it stands at the moment favours those that have done two of the four stops. But that could change so quickly in the game. That's why you just want to wait. It's a 161 lap race and you just don't discount how long and hard and tricky it is to get out there and get a result. I mean, you've just got to, there's, there's a long game to play here. I don't know if you can see over in the back of the shot there, there's, uh, I can just see Lee Holdsworth putting his balaclava and his ear moulds in, so they're getting ready for a pit stop. But I do want to just quickly grab a chat with uh, Freddie Clemenko, uh, two of your cars in the top four. More importantly, Betty, I'm just watching Andrew Thompson punch out some of the fastest laps in the race. You must be impressed with that. Very impressed. Uh, he is blowing me away. Yeah, uh, I'm a happy woman. We love it when you're happy, Betty. Well done. Thank you. That's it. So, <laughs> Well, she should be impressed with Andrew Thompson. He's doing a sterling job, and Betty Klemenko always brings a lot of colour and atmosphere to a V8 supercar event. Outside of Craig Lowndes, I reckon she signs more autographs across the course of the weekend than anyone. <laughs> so Warren Luff, just under a second lead over Thompson, Paul Dumbrell, Craig Baird, Luke Yulden make up our top five here at Sandown.
Let's take you through the highlights so far of the Wilson Security Sandown 500. Steve Owen started from pole position with Paul Dumbrell next to him. The story of the start, though, was Stephen Richards on the second row of the grid. Couldn't get it going. He is partnering Mark Winterbottom this weekend. This was a big off for the Nissan Hornet. The Norton Hornet of uh, Daniel Gaunt, car 36 with Michael Caruso. Now the Holden Racing Team have really copped it. Loose bodywork for Nick Perkat in car number two. And he would then cop a pit lane penalty for speeding. So have to come in yet again. This would trigger a safety car. The cones knock flat up there along the back straight. Luke Yildon doing some damage along the way. So the safety car was triggered. Andrew Jones gave Warren Luff a whack that sent Luffy on the outside of turn one and further down the field and a huge accident for Ash Walsh. Crunch. Big one for car 17. Not surprisingly, the Wilson Security Falcon is over and out for the rest of the day. So Tim Blanchard didn't get a drive in this 500. So the co-drivers are now getting ready. The main game drivers are suiting up and waiting for their turn. They've asked a little bit more just by the way that this has played out of their other drivers to go a bit further along because of the stops of the safety car. But now the big guys are ready to come back in and go to town. And some of them are choosing not to, to give them the extra laps. But hearing from Craig Baird, who's in fourth position, that he will definitely come in after serving the 54 laps, which is the minimum that the co-driver must do. So we're right on the cusp of that now. You can see a lot of the big guns getting ready, but they're actually choosing to falter back to not extending those laps. So there's a, a lot of vagary now. There's a lot of what you've got to do in this sport now. Think on your feet. How's this going to work for you? Some are just going to empty the guys out. Some are going to keep them in. Dumbrell, for instance, done a great job. He'll stay in. And here he is taking position from Andrew Thompson to make it Red Bull Racing Australia 1 and 2 on the road. So that answers a little bit of the question about how he's been dealing with the traffic and what's his pace look like when he's buried in the field. That's an important question to answer for later in the race very often. So uh, that's a nice job by him and he continues to march up. He's got 0.2 of a second now at the margin. Warren Luff, Paul Dumbrell. With the whole racing team drivers getting ready to jump in the car, Garth Tan is set to go. James Courtney as well, JC. Uh, Murph's got you in 18th at the moment after a bad sportsmanship flag. This is going to be some drive from you this afternoon. Yeah, we've had a, had a bit of drama. We had uh, some loose bodywork when we were running comfortably in fifth, so that was a bit disappointing. But, uh, but no, Murph's pushing hard coming through, so uh, sometimes you just have to push him a little bit harder than you want. So it's, uh, he's doing a great job. It's just unfortunate we had that drama. All right, good luck, mate. Cheers, guys. Interesting exchange at the end of the front straight there with Dumbrell pulling out, passing Warren Luff, not being able to stop it, and then running wide, dropping the spot again. Just bringing you up to speed on what uh, Barretts was talking to James Courtney about there with a the bad sportsmanship flag shown to car 22, Greg Murphy not giving racing room. In that little battle uh, with Steve Owen. Steve Owen coming off turn four. We saw that replay a little bit earlier. It's oh, actually a touch-up. So that's looking like it's going to be close. And by the time I spat it out, they head-butted each other. Gee, you had to give it a gear early then you hear how hard it was revving then in the down change back to second it's helping andrew thompson's cause here at the moment there's a very big chance oh he's just gone into pit lane i was just about to say there's a big chance that the Erebus motorsport mercedes may be leading the first enduro race of the season in so they flash but they've brought both of them in they brought craig baird in so, so that'll mean that he's i oh know this they're in the separate pit bays that's right so luke yulden in as well Okay, first driver change that we get to see. Out comes Andrew Thompson, stellar job, well done. Tim Slade puts the insert seat in. Out goes Craig Baird, in goes Lee Holdsworth. Down at Nissan Motorsport, they're moving too. Michael Caruso goes in for Daniel Gaunt. And Luff will pit this lap. So keep an eye out for car 888 to come in this lap. Okay, mate. Just pump that pedal, pump that pedal first. So Red Bull Racing Australia not bothering to fully run their tank down in car triple eight. Okay. 
Luff has been holding him up. Yeah, now one of the things they're going to do here, I can see on the Triple Eight car, they're going to put a set of pads in. You heard Scafie talking earlier about the quality of the pads coming out. Now, when we do, there they go in with the calipers. That's pushing the pistons back, back into the calipers. Pads are out now. Rich, if we have a look at these pads that have just come out, down on the ground here, you can see there's actually nothing too much wrong with them. They're not physically worn out. There they are. But you need pad quality. So they've been sticking hot, which takes away off some of the quality, and they'll have a very fine taper on them, which means when the driver goes to the pedal, he's got a little bit of free play. And the best thing you can have for a driver, particularly down there if you want to stop deep, is a very full pedal. When you put your foot near it, bang, you want it on and especially late in the race. So the real benefit of that is if this turns out to be a full-blown sprint in the last 10 laps of the race, the thicker brake pad will serve you well. You'll get better braking performance out of it. A lot of them could easily have got through. That was nip and tuck there for car number five. Uh, but some of them are doing it to have a, ped a better pedal at the latter part of the race. But also, importantly, a rehearsal for Bathurst where they have to do it. For sure. So Wood... Having a look down the inside of Rindler now at turn one. It's been a pretty good battle, these guys. He gets it done nicely. Canto's going to buy into the back of this. They're all on the cusp of coming in. Steve Richards, they're in fifth position. Just in behind that battle, and you can see Andy Jones, Jack Perkins, just in behind there also. And this is the Nissan of Rick Kelly, Carl Reindler. Oh, look at that. What a move Jeez. from Canto on the outside on approach into turn six. Wow. And they're going to bring car 15 in this lap. So uh, Carl Reindler's managing that as well as all of it, everything else that's going on around him. Whew. That was a pretty wild moment at the end of the back straight. But it was also, I think, quite smart for Carl just to break it a little bit conservatively because... He, I think he's going to come in now. Yep. So that was quite smart. He didn't need to be involved in the drama. Canto still had to make that move stick. Straight away, as soon as they get into pit lane, pretty much. They're into their box. So in comes Rick Kelly. See how he turned the wheel then? That's always a drama when you get in. You try to not to, to bump the steering wheel because if the guys are doing brake pads or even putting the wheel on and off, very hard for them to execute that when the wheel turns. So he confirms he's got comms, that was the nod. And one of the things that probably sounds bizarre at home, but it's really hard to see the seat belt knuckle because of the way your helmet protrudes. Little problem here for car number two, Nick Percat off the road at the end of the back straight. Two is the grass, there's no culverts there so he can rejoin but makes the tyres filthy. He's been going ballistic on the radio about this, so there's somebody else involved, according to Nick Perkett. This day of disaster is not getting any better for car two. It's going to be a huge rescue job. Oh, so he's hung out wide. He's on the dirty stuff. It was, it was his own teammate, I think, that he might have been complaining about. So I think you'll find it was Greg Murphy uh, on the inside of him. And then you've got Ryan Briscoe there too. A little pep talk going on. Bottle Racing. They all look pretty happy and composed. With Dean Canto doing a good job here. We're riding with him. That's Dale Wood in front. So positions two and three on the road. Paul Dumbrell's 15 and a half seconds further up. He's in another postcode. Good reason to be smiling. Bottle Racing because Dean Canto's done a nice solid job in this stint. He's third on the racetrack at the moment. Whoa, oh, Mark Lee off the racetrack at the moment, but back onto it. So he's gone off the exit of turn one and rejoined at three. The car's been a real handful this weekend. I spoke to John Webb after the warm up and I said, Is it any better? And he went worse than yesterday. And yesterday it was pretty grim. <laughs> so it wasn't uh, behaving at all well in the handling department, also wasn't stopping well and really puzzled as to how to get more out of it. So a 
Remember, they were waiting for Dean Canto. They were getting ready, but it won't be this time around. Well, just back in the Red Bull garage with Warren Luff, and uh, Luffy, that was a tough slog out there early on in that race. Yeah, look, wasn't, the car wasn't great to begin with, but uh, as the race has gone on, the car's continually got better. Had a little bit of a rub there with Andy Jones down at Turn 1. I, I thought maybe I'd left him enough room, but look, it's a long race. There's still a long way to go, so hopefully uh, hopefully Craig can bring it home for us. Pit lane queuing's frustrating for you guys. Yeah, it is. But look, everyone's in the same boat, especially early on in the race when there was going to be that, if there was going to be an early safety car, we knew it was a likelihood that it was going to happen. But as we've seen in the past, it all sort of plays out once we get towards the end of the race. The real race starts at sort of about like 1.20, 1.30 when everyone's on their last pit stop. So we'll see how we're going then. All the best, Luffy. Thanks. Thank While Luffy was talking there, Paul Dumbrell's on the radio talking about uh, brake locking. He's got a 13.9 second margin. Oh, Ooh, there it is. So there's the brake lock. He was in the rear. In fact, I thought he would have been talking about the front, but he couldn't get it stopped at turn two. Well, it's, it's a little bit on the downshift as much as anything. So when he went back to second gear, it locked up and he couldn't get it turned. So anyway, he gave him a report back. Ooh. Oh, that, not pretty. It's Alex Primer in the hot seat and then Todd Kelly coming together. Been a bit of contact with those guys throughout the year. And that cycling them, the brake temperatures from turn one to turn two are quite different. So it fades the front brake, it has a lot of rear brake, and we saw Paul Dumbrell get caught out there with rear locking. He's been very, very fast. It's the first mistake that we've seen Paul make. Fascinated to see what happens when David Reynolds and Jamie Wincup return to their car and Chaz Mostert as well. So this intriguing race continues as they approach 100 laps to go.
Welcome back. Paul Dumbrell still behind the wheel. So Jamie Wincup waiting patiently to take control of car number one. It's a 17 second lead at the moment, but errors are starting to creep in at this critical stage. Remember, they're asking these co-drivers to do more laps than they originally planned. This is interesting. All of a sudden, we've seen a spate of errors. People just wandering off the road, disappearing into the grass. We've had Greg Murphy come in with loose bodywork again. The Holden Racing Team beset with this problem today. Both cars have had damage at the rear and have had to come in with mechanical black flag. They took the opportunity to put James Courtney in the car. Here's Dean Canto off the road at turn one. So I wonder whether it's just a bit of match fitness, hot, worn out, judgments starting to go away because the grip goes away, the track condition gets worse. Hard to speculate. There's sometimes lots of different reasons why that stuff happens, but we've seen a spate of weirdness in the last five minutes. And there's Wink Cup waiting and waiting. Dean Canto had just taken second place when that off happened for him, and the day didn't start too well for Greg Murphy in the warm-up session when they went to do a driver change. He slipped and fell flat on his backside trying to get in to car number 22. So body work down there at turn three. Which would be a safety. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. You got a direct line to Tim Schenken. So I, was, so I was trying to spit out, but Tim got there before me. Nostradamus. <laughs> huh? Your predictions are just extraordinary. I wish I was that good at Lotto. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Activity central. It was interesting to just have a, a sneak peek of Jamie Wincup waiting perched high on the bench in the garage there and just getting into that zone that we've becoming accustomed to. So, they're going to leave him in. Wow. That's a big call, especially after the couple of mistakes that Dumbrell's made in the last couple of laps. Oh, he is out. No, the, the, is oh, the wheels are spinning. That's it. He's, he, it's a pit lane drive through penalty. He's kicked it into gear. Now, that was chaotic. It was stay in, then get out. No wonder the poor guy is confused. They are usually the very, very best. It's always composed. That was total chaos. And remember the first one. It was an insight into what was going to happen later on. There was chaos there. So Paul Dumbrell was initially told no driver change. When he pulled up into the pit box, he was told, you're out, you're out. And in the rush to get out, the wheels have spun while the car's up. We've seen it before, we know what happens, that will be a penalty. It's not a little bit of a spin, that's well, he's, he's fully in gear. Kicked it into gear. So in the chaos of uh, am I in, am I out, am I unplugging, am I doing up, what am I doing? I mean, when you're hot and tired, that's just the worst sequence that you could possibly deal with as a driver. So Jamie Winkup, our championship leader, now in the car, but a penalty is coming the way of car number one for sure. While the safety car's out there, we'll grab a quick break. Yeah, mate, we have a full fuel. This time done uh, 20 odd 
American-based Australian driver Ryan Briscoe now leads the Wilson Security Sandown 500 on restart. Car 66 at the head of the field. Steve Owen, car 6 behind him. This drama continuing to unfold as they try and settle in to some sort of racing groove because it's been so haphazard over the last half hour with driver changes and incidents on the track. Michael Caruso in the Norton Hornet pushed and shoved out wide and more contact here between car 88 and two. So Dean Fiore and Garth Tander come together along the back straight. David Wall cuts in front of Caruso. Those spinning wheels of car number one that we saw on the other side of the brake under investigation for Jamie Winkup. And it's Dodge and car stuff on the restart. There's a lot of guys running very wide at the end of the back straight then. So much aggro. And now finally they find some space to sort themselves out. So Briscoe again. On the inside at turn one is Chaz Mostert in the car after Dale Wood did such a great job. Car one wheel spinning during pit stop. Black flag, pit lane drive to penalty, car one. There you have it. Jamie Wincup and Paul Dumbrell will have to come through and serve a pit lane penalty because of this. So as a result of Paul Dumbrell accidentally kicking into gear in the confusion about whether he was in or out. So Wink Cup will now serve this penalty and the car at the top of the queue with, the, uh, with three stops against his name looking pretty good for pace and uh, well positioned out of this will actually be Mark Winterbottom. So swings and roundabouts. Steve Owen here, pushing against Ryan Briscoe. We'll slide through on the inside. Craig Lowndes tucked in behind the Super Chief Auto Commodore. So extraordinary turn of events, isn't it? When it all settles out, Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards' car five will be in the best position. Roland Dane, a couple of uh, quick and obvious questions, mate. Uh, I know there was going to be a little bit of discretion with in terms of wheels turning. I think you've got to cop that one on the chin. Uh, it, just, it happened because we did a, a driver change without adequate warning. So the, the PD getting out uh, had the, didn't have the car in neutral, that's why. Given the raw speed of the car, particularly as PD is shown in there, um, can you recover from your strategy-wise? Yeah, yeah, no, there's plenty of time. Yep. That's the answer we're looking for. <laughs> plenty of time to give it a go. So what do you think? If you're a regular viewer of the V8 Supercar Championship, you know that that's what they cop for spinning wheels in a pit stop. It's a safety issue, v8supercars.com.au slash vote or download the 7 Sport app and let us, know, let us know, do you think it's a fair penalty for that happening in pit lane to serve a pit lane drive through? This is a great battle. It is a great battle. Because pattern. Steve Owen got down the inside before, this was coming onto the straight, and then Ryan fired back down the inside again at turn one, which is really great stuff. Very, very good. Craig Lowndes is just spectating, he's sitting there, these boys are playing for keeps. Lee Holtworth and Tim Slade 
for Erebus Motorsport inside the top 10, both of them. It's not as though Briscoe doesn't have some pedigree. Eight IndyCar wins, 13 poles, eight Indy 500 starts, including a pole at the Indy 500. Been to Daytona on six occasions for the 24-hour race. He did the Le Mans 24-hour this year. He's got the big three against his name coming up this year. Indy 500, he did that with Chip Ganassi. He'd been to Le Mans in the Acura sports car, the Honda sports car, and he'll do Bathurst, and he joins Jeff Brabham. The last time that happened was back in 93 for Jeffrey. And Vern Chupan and John Andretti have also got those big three against their names. So it could be lots of elite class. Big fan of Ryan, he's a good young guy. He's recovering from that nasty incident where, it, oh no, awkward. Scott McLaughlin all locked up. That's got to be a flat spot, surely, into turn nine. He was pegged in behind Stephen Johnson there. And this is what happens when the traffic's all mismatched. Did John McIntyre come out of that badly? He was on the outside when Winterbottom went down the inside. And then they all got him at Denonong Road also. So McIntyre jumped backwards from seventh position to 11th in all that. Look up the top of the screen and you can see one of the Fujitsu Gary Rogers Motorsport entries doing some rally cross. So that's Alex Premer, of course, over there on the grass. Larry Perkins did that to me once and he didn't even lose a spot. Drove around the outside and straight down through the grass. Arrowed back on the inside. Thought nothing was wrong. So car number one, Jamie Winkup, is 25th. Still got that green co-driver's light activated in there as well, so they haven't managed to sort out a lot over the last uh, few laps. So the drive-through penalty, you think it's fair for spinning wheels in a pit stop? At the moment, it's tracking sort of 50-50. The reason why the penalty exists is for safety. So uh, crew safety, hands, the crew hands are... Uh, obviously working around the back of the car and it doesn't take much imagination to know that you could have a pretty serious incident if someone was working down there and the wheels rotate. So that's the reason why the rule exists. They would have known it was coming too because they knew it happened. Just about to say here, there's more damage to the bonnet. Oh, on car 22. Have a look at the, looks like these are all war, car 22, all the back of it's off. Well, the front's, the front's well, all the caved disappearing, in. so it's just the middle bit left. We've seen a couple of big errors today with the two teams vying for the championship. We said earlier about FPR stacking the cars at that stage when they were out of sync with Steve Richards and Steve Owen. They've been able to recover now. Of the teams that have made the three stops, Winterbottom is effectively leading the race. So that's a great recovery. That won't get them home under a normal strategy. They're about 10 laps out. So they'll still have to stop for a splash and dash towards the end. Then we saw the drama with a late driver call for Red Bull Racing. Paul Dumbrell was in first gear when he got out. Spinning wheels has put Wink Cup right back. We said at the start of the day that this race will have championship implications. Oh. That one for Wink Cup has put him back to 25th. Moffat. Broken front left suspension on that car will put him out of business. And while this is going on, intercepted a radio message. Car 2 has also got a battery problem. So expect Garth Tander to have some electrical issues. Here's the replay of what happened. So that's broken before he's got to turn 6 there. Yeah. Which is a heck of a place to go in with three wheels. Well, experience counts for a lot in races like this, and Stephen Richards, you guys, despite a, a bit of a bumpy start, a stall on the grid, uh, everything's worked out all right your way as far as safety cars went. Yeah, yeah, so far so good. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, you always end up with situations in races that, that aren't ideal, and I, I made a fair, fair meal of start, but you just got to keep on the horse and keep plugging away, and, you know, we've, I think we've had a couple of fortunate safety cars. The car's got good pace, so we're able to make a bit of a mile when the, we had a bit of clear track, so... 
still a long way to go, but we're, we're looking okay. It looks like it might work out all right, Richard. Actually, I did spot, it's amazing how you see it, the V8 when you're out here. I found an old familiar face in the back of the garage here. Seven News is Rebecca Madden. Right, great to see you here. I know you're a big fan of Will Davis and after he took you for a hot lap. I am. I had a, uh, a hot lap two years ago at Clipsal and from then on in, I was absolutely in love with V8 supercars and obviously a fan of FPR and uh, Will Davison. So he's just about to get into the car, so uh, wish him the best. I know you can't take your eyes off him, but he's jumping in right now, Ben. Have a great day at the Sandown 500. Thanks, Mark. Enjoy Good it. to see you. So Steve brings it in in 23rd. Driver assistant for Will Davison there. FPR choosing to have someone help. We saw HRT use their own drivers to do that job, finding seat belts and hooking up window nets. So pump the pedal is bringing up the brake pedal. That was a good stop. That was a good stop. So the tear-off came away to give him a clear view through the screen ahead. Make sure he had brake pedal pressure after a brake pad change. Driver assist who's got nice, cool, steady hands to help Will get in the car. But he's got a very, very big job ahead of him. On corrected order, the car that we're looking or driving with of Chaz Mostert is top three. So when it all settles down for the next round of pit stops, it would be Mark Winterbottom car five in the box seat, Scott McLaughlin car 33, and then Chaz Mostert. Matty, I want to catch a word with a couple of these HRT co-drivers. I'm down here in their pit and they've just got their steering wheel out here ready for car two and they've cleared the garage. So I'll see if we can find out what the issue is. But there's a quick look at one of the steering wheels. You can see how com complex it is. There's your little data screen and you can see the range of buttons on there. Scroll there to scroll through the screen. Alarm reset, the different modes for the different pages. Wiper, washer, uh, start here. You've got a line locker which is off the start line. So a whole bunch of things going on there. But let's see if we can just grab these two boys... Uh, while they're together, um, guys, just got to talk about, uh, I've got to say, mate, I had um, you in particular on short odds for this race with Courtney. And it's, um, if I could describe the day up and down pit lane here, mate, for a lot of people, it seems sort of messy. Um, and it, mate, it is. We just we were just talking about how chaotic it is out there. Um, you know, <laughs> it's incredible what some drivers are doing and where they're putting their cars. The desperation is, and I'm, I, listen, I, I've got to put my hands up. There's a few desperate things by me too, but just to try and get past guys who are, who are looking in their mirrors more than looking ahead. So they're thinking about um, the short term, not the long term out there. So yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone's desperate. There's no question about it. It's making it making it pretty exciting in the car. Yeah, it's good feedback, Murph. And Nick Peercut, yourself, I mean, it hasn't been ideal. Just quickly, mate, I see a steering wheel out there. Have you got a drum with your number two car? Um, I think we might have a small drum. I'm not 100% sure what's, uh, what's going on, but um, same as Murph. It was just desperate out there. I was on some... Uh, <laughs> Um, older tyres and just getting drilled from behind and then the guy in front um, all over the roads. It's interesting, but um, that's what happens when you're playing at the back, really. So. Good luck for the rest of the day then, boys. Yes. Yes. So they've got a battery problem oh, in car number right. two. So Ryan Briscoe has come on in, so that gives us a different race leader, which is Craig Lowndes now. We are approaching the halfway mark of the 500.
Nerves are building. Stephen Richards in pit lane. It's been an eventful day for him and for Ford Performance Racing and for Red Bull Racing Australia and for Holden Racing Team and the rest of the field as well on our mega wall. Race control stand by to see what's next for us on the circuit. In car, we go on board with Rick Kelly, the Jack Daniels Nissan Altima. He's in 13th spot. Just in that break, Red Bull Racing Australia decided to process Jamie Wincup again. And the reason for that is that they're now going to run equidistant stints. They've got one more stop to go, so they're going to maximise the opportunity to get the most out of Wind Cup so that they're going to run the strategy probably regardless of the safety car if there is one. So they came in on lap 80 and uh, plus 42 for simple maths gets him to 122 or thereabouts and then they'll stop him one more time and get him to the end. He'll be nearly bone dry. Here's Chaz Mostert, well positioned in this race coming in from position 17 and believe it or not he's in an arm wrestle strategically with his sparring butt us, uh, buddy Scotty McLaughlin and look at it goes on in the pit lane as it has through the Dunlop series, as it has through this championship year. So these guys are doing it now as a paper exercise. For, they, 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 they've ticked off these mandatory requirements in terms of these stops. In the case of Wind Cup, one of them can't be counted because of the pit lane drive-through penalty. But it's now about what fuel it takes to get to the end of the race. Jamie's earlier stop. By the way, he's come straight out and delivered the fastest lap of the race at 109.906 off the back of that. And you'll see the tempo of the race jump a notch now as the primary drivers get in the car. As the sun gets lower in the west, the track cools out a little bit, it rubbers up. You're going to see some big pace here. And pit lane speeding car 12, that's big news. Oh. So that's a drive through penalty, pit lane drive through penalty. Car number 12, Chaz Mostert. He can least afford that. That's going to cruel his day. Craig Lowndes is in. So is Dave Reynolds. So Wing Cup. Now we found out for sure the fact, we've asked him a couple of times, we didn't really get the facts. He has saved tyres from yesterday. So they've got the freshest tyres. In the second race yesterday, they used or reused the tyres from Paul Dumbrell. There you go. That's for position. Winterbottom's in the car. Pepsi Max Falcon in front now of uh, Craig Lowndes. So Fabian Coulthard's actually the leader of the race at the moment. He's only done a couple of stops. He's just entered pit lane to Crompo as you speak. So that makes Tim Slade the leader of the race in car 47. And Chaz Mostert does that pit lane drive-through penalty. You're better off to do that straight away. So they were very quick, Adam Debore, very quick to respond, get that done and get on with life. You can't do much about it. And in case you're wondering at home, given that you know they have electronic pit lane speed limiters that do that, that hold the car at 40 kilometres an hour, the issue is coming into the lane, actually slowing the car on the brake. It's the voice of Chris Clark. Hey, go, go, go. 
team manager. So he'll drop back in about the midfield, Fabian, 15th or thereabouts. So Mercedes, Slade and Holdsworth, 1-2. First time that we've seen them leading this year and their engine performance has been much better at a place like this. This is a very power sensitive circuit. Large percentage of the lap is full throttle. And their performance this weekend has been very much improved. Here's their pit entry. So Mostert around the outside. There's a bit of chaos here. So he gets on the throttle. Now watch it overrun. Yeah, so you're still trying to slow it. And he was definitely you can see how much ground he made on McLaughlin. In fact, lucky he didn't drill the back of it hard. Lucky he didn't end up in the fence on the left, too. Well, he had a big brake lock induced understeer. He nearly clouded the fence on the left side. Well, Taz Douglas, it's certainly been a tough day for you guys in the Norton 360 car. James is in the car at the moment. The boys are working hard. Yeah, yeah, it has. We were chuck along all right the best we could out there and um, passed it over to James and... Uh, Something's happened under the left front there. We've had a bit of a mechanical failure. I'm not sure what it is. And uh, it's put us out of the race for now, but the boys are fixing it and we'll get back out there and do some laps. Thanks, Taz. No worries. We started in position 20, Taz and James Moffat. And look at this, Erebus Motorsport, one and two in the first endurance race of 2013. Their first crack at V8 Supercars. Hertek Enduro Cup and Betty Clemenko will be smiling right now because Tim Slade and Lee Holdsworth leading the way on the road at the Wilson Security Sandown 500.
We're back at Sandown, Wilson Security, Sandown 500, and that's Garth Tander. What a day it's been for him. He had problems with the brakes, and he's talking about the fact that he had pedal height, but no retardation. A bit like Borat. So he couldn't get it stopped down there at turn nine. And uh, his day has been a shocker. There's been bodywork off the thing. They've got a problem with the battery, and he's been in subsequent discussion with the team. And it seems as though uh, whatever it was may have just been something going on in the pedal box at that time. Left rear corner of Fabian Coulthard's car. So Tanda in the wars. So drop down the order as a result of that now to position seven. So this gives you an idea of just how tough it is around this racetrack because this place is pretty brutal on the transmission. Very difficult and hard to get the suspension just right for this track because there are so many different elements to it. So good green tyres on this car. I heard Phil Key tell Fabian Coulthard he's uh, 15th at the moment and 50 odd seconds off the lead. He's on the lead lap and he's done three stops, got one stop to go. Oh, trouble down here at turn nine, and Garth Tander again in the wars. David Wall this time, tangled up. So the pedal again. So they've got something. He can't stop it. got to bring it in. You've got to bring it in. If the brake's like that at a place like this, you've got to bring it in. Which they're doing right now along with Michael Caruso. Todd Kelly's also in the lane. But he's got nothing here to stop this car. Got it didn't lock a wheel. That's, that's, that's the telling sign. If you're down the inside, you've got to make contact. The wheel will lock if the brake's working. Clearly the brake is not working. He, Garth feels there's something going on in the pedal box of the car. He said he was pushing as hard as he could in that first off and it wouldn't stop. So David Wall, the innocent victim of that. Which, which also means, by the way, um, they don't care in race control what your problem is. When you shove somebody off the road like that, you'll get a pit lane drive through penalty. If you did straighten him up. Well, Paul Dumbrell, we're into the second half of this race now. There has been a very eventful first half. You had a bit of trouble with that pit stop getting out of the car. Yeah, no, we, uh, we had a little bit of a late call uh, coming into the pits, but um, unfortunately it's just not good enough on my behalf, to be honest. So I uh, can't make those mistakes uh, on the big stage. So it's a very, very disappointing way to end uh, what felt like a pretty good uh, first uh, couple of stints. But it's not over yet, Paul. We should emphasise. I mean, we're just into the second half of this race. You've still got time. Safety cars go your way. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you know, the safety cars go our way. A car's really quick, I think, what, what we showed this morning and yesterday. There's no doubt about that. But, uh, you know, we've got to stay out of trouble. J-Dub is uh, clearly, clearly one of the best guys out there. So um, he'll do whatever he can, and uh, I guess it's up, up to the gods. Hey, put your feet up and enjoy. Thank you. At the run of the race, didn't he, Paul Dumbrell? few errors started to creep in and then it all came unstuck in pit lane. It's a big fight back from here but that's the beauty of endurance racing. And time is always on your side. Tim Slade, the race leader, has entered pit lane so that means his Erebus Motorsport partner in crime, Lee Holdsworth, in car number four, takes over the lead. news about Tim Slade coming into this event on the Friday that he will be leaving Erebus at the end of this season and in a new seat for 2014. Good story here though this weekend is the general pace we've seen from their cars. It's been good. They were very strong immediately in practice on Friday. All their cars have looked good. Stephen Johnson I've spoken to about. He's been enjoying driving the car. So there's Slade being held, waiting for fuel at the moment. It's going in at the rate of 3.4 litres a second. 110 litre tank. It's about a 30 second odd process. So this is effectively the battle for the lead with Lowndes and Winterbottom. There's going to be a bit more play out yet because everyone's still not totally 
squared away in terms of fuel consumption. So Will Davison's been asked to save 0.12 of a litre per lap. So his speed's OK. They've got some rear brake locking issues. Larko's down there in the HRT garage and obviously the brake problems that Garth Tander was experiencing. You can't ever at any racetrack have brake issues, but this is one of the worst ones for its very high speed ends to both the straights. And Maro Engel. Uh, Rick Kelly incidentally saying yeah. the car's almost undrivable. Steve, I'll just stick him head in there, but very hard to get a read on what's going in. Uh, what's the problem with the car? We've got a bent steering arm. Uh, we're just taking the opportunity to change the pads at the same time. And we're getting back out there. Mate, just uh, your read. You've been around a long time, been to a lot of racing. It's, it's a messy day, isn't it? Not, not here. I mean, up and down the pit lane. It's a messy day. It's a very scrappy day. The, the cars are running into one another, and it's just a messy day. It's probably fun for the punters, but... Um, it's pretty ugly for us. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> Problem is with that, Steve, is the cars don't run into each other, the drivers do. And seriously, what Murph was saying before when we got him in the pit lane was that there has been some absolute lunacy. There's more contact in this race in a 500k race than I've seen in a long, long time. We're only halfway there. I'm in Larco. It's good fun to watch. It's great fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break here. The Wilson Security Sandown 500. Lee Holdsworth in charge. Been a pretty wild day this our first event of the Pertec Enduro Cup it began with Stephen Richards getting bogged down off the start and then Warren Luff and Andrew Jones got tangled up down at turn one that to be investigated post-race look at this from Ash Walsh 
massive, massive impact along the back straight at the exit there at turn six into the wall. That was the end of the day for car 17. They had to double stack at the stop, but they did it in the wrong order, and that cost car number six dearly. The pole-sitting car of Will Davison and Steve Owen sent them tumbling down the field as mistakes started to creep in. At this stage, Paul D'Umbrella had something like a 15 or 16 second lead, but then he went off the road. Car 34 and car seven getting tangled up, Alex Premer and Todd Kelly. And then Dean Canto still behind the wheel of car 55. At that stage, he was second in this race. He goes onto the grass as well, then has to rejoin. Now this was the critical moment for our championship leading car. Originally they said no driver change, then they said yes. Paul D'Umbrell activates the wheels spinning while the car's up. That's a pit lane penalty straight away. James Moffat broken upright on the front left of the Norton Hornet. And then contact here between Garth Tander and David Wall as Tander's braking issues continue. And the drama continues on the whole for the Holden Racing Team. Mark Larkham said it before the break. This has been a messy day of V8 Supercar Racing. And it's thrown up all the drama that you'd think of in endurance racing as well. So Shane Van Gisbergen, Team VIP Pet Foods Entry, partnered with Dutch driver Jeroen Bleekermolen. Driver change and all the previous complexity of long distance races have now been completed. All the main game guys are in, but the complexity of doing something like this with a brake pad stop is always hard. And there's a lot, of, lot to be said about doing the brake pad change earlier, Crompo, so that you get that done and you minimise the risk. However, if you do it later, then the pedal quality is better, but bigger risk when you make that change. So it's also again, harder to squeeze those pads, uh, the pistons further back, isn't it? This is a big lunge here and a nice job for Jamie Wincup. Remember, he's on a big claw back here at the moment. That puts him up in eighth position, Brett. Hey guys, dear, Carl Reinler has some heavy duty uh, sporting expertise in his corner and his partner Elise Rashishi, Olympic gold medalist, and Steve Hooker, Olympic gold medalist. Elise, given that you've been there in sport and you see him do what he does, do you still get nervous watching him? Yeah, absolutely. And especially because um, because he hasn't been racing so much this year, it's, it's really nice to see him back out and enjoying it and teaming up with Rick again and um, with the new team as Nissan. But um, yeah, I get a little bit nervous since, since, since the accident. I, I, I love watching him, but... I'm sure, um, yeah, it's, it's a tough sport. But Steve, you've, you've done some training with Callum and you, you train hard, he trains hard. Physically, these guys are in amazing shape. Oh, Carl's an incredible athlete. His endurance is as good as anyone I've ever seen. He, and his work ethic as well, it's, it's exemplary. Um, I actually did some stuff as well with Craig last week, um, Craig Lowndes, and he, his performance for a guy at his age is just unbelievable as well. Now, your endurance really is going to count pretty soon right because you've got Dancing with the Stars really coming up. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm actually partnered up with uh, Matt White's old partner, Ashley Hunter, um, and I'm enjoying that. We've been practising for four weeks now, but I thought it was time to balance out the dancing with a bit of motorsport this weekend. Oh, that's good. Well, Matt's given her plenty of skills in dancing. He has tremendous rhythm, so he's passed it on, so you'll get a bit of that, guys. So all the very best. Great to see you here. Enjoy the race. There you go, Matty. Went all the way to the GF and lost for it. <laughs> OK, so Jonathan Webb, who's a bit out of sequence here at the moment, will stop shortly. We'll just have a look at this replay and see what unfolds here. Oh, so someone touring, one of the Erebus cars touring the gravel. And so uh, one stop remaining now for the key runners in this race. So shortly, Mark Winterbottom, it was car nine in strike down there, Mario Engel. So there's John O. Webb, leader of the race, but uh, last stopped on 66, so uh, plus 42 laps. He's not very far away from another stop here. He's got a nine and a half second lead. But the corrected leader of the race at the moment is Mark Winterbottom. He stopped on 82. If you use the 42 lap rule, and there's a bit of conjecture over the precise fuel range of the cars at the moment, you'll get to lap 124. So you've got the one stop that then gets you home to 161. So Lowndes and Winterbottom are only a couple of laps apart in their strategy. And then behind them, David Reynolds is also tied to the same strategy. And so is Scott McLaughlin. So my point here really is that Winterbottom, Lowndes, Reynolds, McLaughlin, and even to some extent Courtney, they're just going to have their one further stop to get them fueled up to go and then a sprint race to home. So who will have the balance and what sort of fighting gear have they got for that last stint? And of course, who does have track position at the moment? It's Mark Winterbottom who's got it over Craig Lowndes. And Lowndes has got a remarkable record here in these events. 
if he can pick up another win in a 500 race today, it becomes 500 race win number nine. It's extraordinary performance over the years for Craig Lowndes. The other guy that we've got to be careful of, and what you're talking about there, Neil, is a, effectively a green race, a full speed finish. But if we get a safety car, that gets Wing Cup back in play again. So yes. it's difficult to see at the moment where he is, if it runs green, whether he can get, in terms of the pace that they've shown, whether he can move forward past Courtney and McLaughlin. But without a safety car, I doubt it. Guys, I've come down here. I love it down here. This is the best seat in the house. So this is a little corner coming onto the main straight. And this, along with another one, which is about a kilometre over that way, are the two most important corners on the track because they lead onto long straight. So they come around here in second gear. And the cars, it's just not a corner. What they're trying to do, you can see there, using all the curb, is to actually unwind the lock and get the, get the load back onto the back of the car so you can get hard on the throttle and drive down the straight. Now, we saw some guys getting nailed for pit lane speed limiting. Chas Moster just recently. There you are, look. Right, so that yellow line out there on the ground, that's where it starts. That's the 40k zone. And if you look very carefully, Pete here in the tarmac, you see those little cut lines in the tarmac there. Now, they've got little electronic devices in there that feed a signal straight up to the race control tower. If It's a time versus distance calculation. So if you go through there too quick, you are gone. And the reason they do that, when we always to be a little bit clever, you could actually come in there behind another car when the radar gun was up there and you could sneak up behind him. Well, you can't do that no longer. Off the road. Marco, we've got a big off here from David Reynolds. He's gone straight through at turn one. He's gone through the dirt onto the grass. From position three, this is critical. So Reynolds was one in the hunt. And that was a big lockup. That's probably the worst lockup we've seen at turn one the whole time. And that will not only hurt him with the occurrence that you just saw arrowed off the road, but that tire will be destroyed. Have a look at this. Very bumpy braking area, locked the right front, couldn't get it unlocked. You can see it stopped for about 100 metres. There's the replay from the other angle. That shot we had before was of his co-driver, Dean Canto. So that's ingested a heap of gravel in the front of that car as well. Here it is from onboard James Courtney's car. Look at the smoke signals in the distance. And the problem for David was he couldn't release it because he was committed so deep into the corner to release the brake pedal would have pumped him even further. And there was actually a bit of aggro between Scott McLaughlin there and James Courtney in that little exchange. He said it was instantly locked and here is a lock up from Both. James Courtney and McLaughlin. I wonder if there's anything on the race track the out there. When you see so many cars doing it, you suddenly start looking in another direction for the source. There may be a bit of fluid on the road. And remember exactly where David Reynolds went off is where his partner, Dean Canto, went off. Yep. And the mistakes started creeping in at that critical time just before the driver changes. We've been following the fortunes of those who started the race, the co-drivers. And that's going to be our next question for you. How do you rank? The co-drivers and their performances. We've picked five. Paul Dumbrell, Stephen Richards, Jack Perkins, Dale Wood and Warren Luff. If you go to v8supercars.com.au or the Seven Sport app, you can rank our best co-driver performance of those five drivers as the Wilson Security Sandown 500 continues.
crowd here this weekend, especially today. They got here early, grabbed their seats in the grandstand and they're seeing quite a performance because it's been one of those days in endurance racing where everything has threatened to happen and has. So Mark Winterbottom is our race leader in car number five. Remember, Stephen Richards started on the second row of the grid in this car and couldn't get away. They fell all the way back down the order to about 17th. And now he's got Craig Lowndes clawing all over him. One and two on the road. Behind them is Jamie Wincup. Fourth and is Scott McLaughlin and fifth is James Courtney. Lowndes stopped a little bit later, so he's in a slightly better position in terms of how this works in the refill as well. But he's got car pace too, which is impressive. And we talk about this in the way that he can work the day and surf the knife edge of the changing conditions that drivers need to deal with in endurance racing. One other thing uh, to bear in mind is I, I just intercepted some chat with Jamie Wincup to Mark Dutton and I reckon I heard him ask for just two tyres instead of four for the next stop. And if he does that, there's a little bit of time in that. No, no doubt. So if he does that, based on this circuit not being very hard on the front tyre, that will be an advantage for Wing Cup. And he's made speed. He's got very, very good pace. We said before that when we looked behind McLaughlin and Courtney that Wing Cup was there right now on track. He's third. And we got that shot before when this is a great battle for the lead between Winterbottom and Lowndes. And when we looked in the background of the shot, there was Wing Cup. So don't discount him yet. He's uh, stopped earlier than any of those that he's racing, though, on lap 79. So they're all working towards that critical number that Mark Larkham spoke about, spoke about in his race facts at the beginning of the day. Lap 119 gets you in the fuel range to take on the load and get home. And then how long does it take to refill the car becomes the critical it. thing. Here comes Lowndes down the inside and Winterbottom leaves a gap. He doesn't want to argue. He knows that he didn't have the pace to respond then. That was smart. Mark could have forced him in, slowed them both down. Opportunity for both cars to make contact then. And Mark Winterbottom did a good job. It's too early to fight for this. Don't worry, he won't give it away. But it's too early to fight. It's 161 laps. They'll all be ruining the lack of adjustability in the pit stops too. This is a bit of big learning exercise. Oh, oh. that's nasty for Ooh. Shane Van Gisberg. And it hasn't been a great weekend. He's in position 16, clobbers the guardrail on the exit of turn three there pretty heavily. That will have given it a, a tweak in the steering arm, I would think. So we asked you to rank your best co-driver performance of the day so far. Paul Dumbrell paired up with Jamie Wincup, currently in first. Well, make that Warren Luff currently in first. Stevie Richards in third with Dale Wood and Jack Perkins in our top five. Continue to vote. When we lock it down, we'll give you the final order as you see it. For those five guys. Look at this. James Courtney, Will Davison now side by side along the main straight here at Sandown. Ahead of them is Scott McLaughlin. And Will last stopped on lap 75. And through he goes. Ooh. Oh, gee, that was a big slide at the end of the corner. And Courtney dives back up there again. Will off the road. That was messy. Both guys. Both guys contributed to that. They took so much speed into turn one after that long drag down the main straight. By the time they got to two, they were trying to settle each other up and Courtney had to hit the anchors. If, if Will stopped on 75 and it's a 42 lap range, it only gets him to 117, which is right on the margin to be That's able right. to refill it and get home. He's racing hard at the moment. And I imagine, I'm only guessing, that they'd be also trying to talk to him about a little bit of fuel con conservation, depending on what their actual fuel mileage is. And only they, those guys know the actual numbers. Greg Murphy biting his nails. Is there a straight panel left on the Holden Racing Team Commodore? Maybe that should be a question. I don't know, getting a bit of a read on uh, Will Davids's mood here today. I don't know if the team will be talking to him about too much at all, to be quite frank. Um, you know, it's, uh, well, he's not a happy camper, and that's been reflected in his mood in the car. And you can't have that in endurance racing. It's a tough one, isn't it? I totally agree with you, Lucker. That You said it yesterday about mind management, not just for the co-drivers, but for the drivers. Look at this. This is a messy exit for Davis. And then a big dive from Courtney. He can't get two cars through there. So he does the Dukes of Hazard across the paddock. So this is on board now with Will. So he chooses to fire through there, pops out back in the lead. They're alongside each other again, and he gets onto the back straight in front. Very messy manoeuvre. So remember the big moment that David Reynolds has 
uh, had earlier in that this session. So those tyres would have been pretty second hand. Go, go, go. He was pretty much on the same strategy as uh, Lowndes, who also stopped on lap 82 until that bit of tyre damage. You see with uh, Dean Cato, Dave Reynolds' teammate, and then I know you're trying to relax as best you can, but it's been a tough day, and David Reynolds' off has really dropped you back, what, from fourth to ninth and maybe further now? Yeah, obviously, um, there's a little bump there in turn one in the braking zone, caught me out, and uh, it's caught Dave out as well, but uh, his lockup was a little bit greater than mine, and he's... Uh, Obviously, flat spot of the tyre, uh, it's hurting quite bad. We've actually dropped down to 23rd now, so uh, we had to make an unforced pit stop, uh, unscheduled pit stop, sorry, because the tyre was too far gone. But uh, one of those days, mate, the uh, the extra pit stop sort of threw a, a spanner in the works there and uh, caught a few people out. But, you know, Bathurst is after this, we can come back strong. And that's endurance racing. Speaking of endurance, what is in that bottle that you're drinking there? Uh, I don't know, my wife made it for me. I think it's legal. Is it legal, honey? Yeah. <laughs> Hi to the boys at home, Lucas and Dylan. That's your recovery drink. Yeah, that's right, mate. It's, it says it on the can. Muscle recovery, perfectly legal. Right, oh, good. Glad to hear it. I might just keep the mini muffins. Thanks. Yeah, so the problem there for those guys is that that stop was completely out of fuel sequence. It was just to recover a dying tyre. So they've got to stop again. They can't get home from this position in the race. And it's whacked them hard, as Dean Canto said, down to 23rd position after starting from 6th. Craig Lowndes and Warren Luff, our defending champions, still at number one. Welcome back, Dean Fiore, mid-pack, making an excursion off the road at Turn 1 in the Dodo Insurance Commodore. And Jason Bright here, well, he's been complaining to 
the team that something was broken in the Team BOC entry, car number eight. They couldn't confirm. He said, trust me, something's broken. He makes it all the way down here as they're about to send him into pit lane and he goes into the wall instead. The front left wobbling away, so he's managed to get that car back out and back into pit lane. But here is Jamie Wincup. Yeah, up to it, second and gets past Mark Winterbottom, Marco. Yeah, sorry, mate. They're just putting uh, Brighty's car in the garage. They've got the Gojacks under it. I had a quick look. It is the left... Well, it's not the steering arm. looks like the little clevis that holds the steering arm to what we call the upright that holds the wheel on is broken. So it's a considerable job. They'll be out for a while. Yeah, it had to be a pretty big failure not to have any steering at the final corner for the car to go straight on like that. Is uh, more than just a, a bent steering arm. So well done, Marco. So Todd Kelly in 11th, having a fair battle with Van Gisbergen, Alex Davison, the same group. Time to lock off our question about ranking the best co-driver performance of the day. Late charge for Paul Dumbrell, so PD the winner in terms of the five that we selected for good efforts today in terms of co-driving and right now his teammate Jamie Winkup is in second spot 1.8 seconds away at Craig Lowndes. And Mark Dutton just confirmed with Jamie Winkup they will not be doing pads in his stop that would be a risk at this point if there was a fumble or an issue then that could put them out of play he's come back mightily in this stint when I first started to look at him I thought oh you even discussed it at one point Mark that he's too far back to make a any kind of impression but he's continued to march as others have made mistakes he's got obviously very good car balance at the moment and good speed he's been a little bit quicker in peak speed than Craig Lowndes and he continues to close the gap it's now 1.6 seconds he's got the eyes on and here he is and the only other guy in the field that's as fast as Wing Cup is Holdsworth Holdsworth's last lap was a 10-4 car four very very strong he's down in eighth position so one two for Red Bull Racing. Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards provisionally on the podium. Will Davison trying to fight back here at the Sandow 500.
They've had their trials and tribulations, car six of Will Davison and Steve Owen starting from pole position and now they've come in on what will be a critical lap number. The big question here is can they make it home? It's a real struggle actually uh, having a bit of a weep. It's got an oil mist around the back of it as well. But it's going to be uh, very tight for Will, particularly if he stays at that sort of pace that we've seen in the recent past. He'll need some fuel saving I think to get oh. home. What happened there? Lock the rears. A few of them are actually copying that little bump down there in turn one and also on the painted white line seems to really upset the car. Listen to this. this. What's this? Oh! It, that's locked the rears. That's that's what's happened. And you said you picked it, but it looked like it grabbed the gear too hard, dragged the rears because it just fired towards the fence. Now is this for a last minute stop? High risk. This is uh, Lowndes. So remember I said that uh, Mark Dutton and Jamie Wincup decided not to do this. But he'll have great brakes and he's got green tyres at the end, so he's got all the fighting tools. We saw Will Davison also put green tyres on, but we're a little bit concerned about the fuel number there, whether it makes it so. Remember, if you've got green tyres and you're going faster, you use more fuel. So Lowndes will go ballistic in this stint. Brand new tyres, brand new brakes. He'll be checking pedal pressure right now. So you'll stand by then. any tick of the clock. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's weeping on the on the O-ring on the right-hand side of the car. Here's Winkup. And Winterbottom's followed him in. This is the final stop of this race. A clean run to the end. So this is not going to disadvantage him too much. How many tyres on the wind car? car? Let's check two or four. They've got a problem. No, they're tweaking the back of it. They're actually changing the stiffness of the back of it. There's a tweak that they've been doing in practice, which is like a roll centre change. So yeah, good pick up, Matt. Yeah, they put the, uh, the stuff. The, the, the problem is at Ford Performance Racing. Look at this. They've got a problem big time at FPR as Jamie Wincup goes on, and it's the front left that they're struggling with on Mark Winterbottom's car. Gee, there's a lot going on there, both, and uh, it continues down there at the moment. He's out of business. This is a critical stop. This Mark Winterbottom who was 70 points from the lead of this championship. And look, look at the head. This is a cruel sport, isn't it? I often say that, such a complex game, so many variables. And a left-hand front wheel issue in the stop for Winterbottom when he was looking like, certainly being on the podium. Lachlan's come in and uh, Coulthard as well. That leaves Holdsworth and Slade leading. Here's Scotty. I'll tell you who's looking good is Lee Holdsworth for the end of the day. If they can keep this run going, they're having a look at a podium finish. Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird, what an effort that'd be for Mercedes. Well, Stephen Richards, you worked so hard all day and then a mechanical problem really cost you a good result. Yeah, the na nature of the game, isn't it? You know, um, we're going, going right. It's not, it's not over yet. There's a few uh, few laps to go. We'll recover, we'll recover a few positions and see how we go. It's about, it's about the championship, mate. <laughs> Good work, Steve. Right. See you, mate. Thank Thanks. You. There was just that call of urgency going on at the FPR garage that alerted us to the fact that they were struggling with something. But it was also messy for Winkup. Yeah. There was something going on, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. But clearly, Ford Performance Racing Pepsi Max stop was slower, and here's some congestion on the part on the, the departure. In fact, it's worse than that. In fact, Ooh. if he didn't break, they would have hit. Mm. I think Scott's actually ha he had to. 
be interesting to see what they do there in unsafe release land. Meanwhile, Jamie Winkup back out there. Before he came in for that pit stop, he was on a rip and tear mission that he is so good at doing, putting together back-to-back -to -back clean, fast laps. So they put this, what we call the stubbies, the incompressible jack stands under car number one. And the reason they do that is because they need someone to go under the car for safety so they can get in and tweak it. What they're tweaking and stiffening the back of it. Mm, interesting. I hadn't spotted that one earlier in the weekend. But it's given this guy a nice free kick. Who's got fresh brakes and fresh tyres and track position. He's fourth at the moment with still Holdsworth Slade and Todd Kelly to take another stop. Winner of the last three straight 500 races, Craig Lowndes. And remember today that if Lowndes and Luff can defend their 500 title here, Craig Lowndes will equal Peter Brock with nine wins in the 500 Enduro. Yeah, there's the... We just got a... It wasn't a funny response, but we were just talking. There's radio stuff about the ice that didn't go in the cool suit. That's why the ice was still parked there. Well, it's car 47 just in here now. We're going to do a patch change, and I'll show you why. For some regard, it's a good eye doing a patch change there, but I'm going to count. Look. One, two, three, four, five. So about five seconds to push the calipers back in. So I push the pistons back into the caliper because they're worn out more, they take longer to push back in. So that's a downside, but the real upside now is this late in the race, we get a safety car, he's in the race with a great pedal feel, that's great for a driver. And it takes a long time to squeeze those pistons back in the brake caliper. You've got to, you're shifting all the oil back up the line. Now, I didn't fully grasp that replay before, but was that five or six that was having the run, an awkward run into turn two? It looked like five. Oh, yeah. Did it make contact? Look like it made contact. Made contact with Van Gisbergen. So uh, that just compounds your day then if you end up with a bit of steering damage. So here it is again in replay just to confirm. So yep, yeah, car number five quite clearly now. Mark Winterbottom and uh, he did make contact. It's more on the front than the side though. He's down in 13th at the moment and uh, that was for position. Erwin Tool's entry of Holdsworth Baird in a really good position for this race. And this is just a little bit later because of the fuel consumption. So remember the, the pit window opened a little two or three laps ago for the others. Holdsworth has been very, very fast. Four fresh tyres, green tyres going on for him. Rick Kelly in also. Todd Kerr is currently, Todd, his brother, is currently leading this race with Lowndes behind. A long wait for fuel. It's the last time they'll have to do it because now they can go all the way to the chequered flag. Who will bring it home? The first leg of the Pertec Enduro Cup.
mate. Cut those tyres. 30, 34 to go. Thanks, JJ. I'm trying to do everything. I'm trying to save fuel at the moment, though. Craig Lowndes, leader by 4.6 seconds. Paired with Warren Luff, the defending Sandown 500 champions. And Craig has been radioing back that he's trying to keep control in the back end of this race. A hairy moment there on approach to turn four, a lockup. He's also registered the fact that he's trying to conserve fuel as well. As Todd Kelly has a wicked ride on the exit of turn one. Just after his stop, so he's done his final stop of the race. So here's the race leader, Craig Lowndes. 4.3 seconds is the gap. One or two heart-in-mouth moments, but an unusual combination for him of trying to make lap speed and save fuel simultaneously. So what's his teammate like at the moment? Well, his teammate is just a little bit quicker in the last sector, and he has taken a bit of time out on this lap as a result of that. So is he in a slightly better position? He will actually... In Lap 128, it's actually going to be yeah, seven tenths of a second on that lap. It's a big game. It's a big jump. So back lead back to 3.9. OK, one thing that just happened, Eddie, he saw me do that brake pad uh, pit stop just here. I didn't do it. We watched the team do it with Tim Slade. He went out and came back in. And what's happened in some of these situations where there's multi-car teams, the third car shares a boom. So these guys share a boom with the Wilson security team next door. Now, what's happened is these guys, Tim Slade's mechanics, have upheld their end of the bargain. They changed the tyres, changed the pads. The Wilson guys weren't there to put the fuel in. Uh, and uh, this is a really weird one. I want to try and find... Yeah, here's Benny Croak, one of the team managers in here. Hey, um, Benny, I know this is a bit of a contentious issue, mate, but I didn't see the uh, fuel go in that car. You brought uh, Tim back around, put it back in, and the Wilson guys weren't there. What was that about? Oh, mate. <laughs> There's just a bit of an error on... Uh, with a, a shared pit crew behalf, so we'll just leave it at that for now. OK, mate, I feel your pain. Well, it's gut-wrenching. He's had such a great run, Tim Slade and Andrew Thompson. And to have that happen at this stage of the race, human error is so costly. Lucky this is a curtain raiser for Bathurst because there's a lot of people with a lot of rust in their game up and down the pit lane at the moment. We're seeing some weird driver stuff. Fumbles in pit lanes, lots of weird and wonderful things happening in strategy. They're going to have to have a tidier act when they get to Bathurst. It is, Neil, isn't it? We've seen bad strategy calls, we've seen pit lane blunders, we've seen on-track blunders, um, and, and these are skilled guys, and it's like they've been so focused on the competition year that they've arrived here, and it, it's really... I mean, this is not usual. I don't understand it. it it's, uh, as we said before, it's messy. And we've changed the recipe because it's a new car for 2013, so that's added another element to manage. And as I said at the very beginning of the day, we've taken quite a bit of the adjustability away from the cars and the teams, and so they've got to really focus very carefully in their prep. And this is going to be a great battle because there's a lot of fuel chat back to Will Davison, and Lee Holdsworth is making ground on him. As you can see, he's right up in behind him. This is going to be effectively for the back of the podium, the bottom step of the podium. Escape, we might get the word on uh, fuel consumption for Will Davis, and I'm just with Tim Edwards now. Tim, what's the feel on uh, Will's fuel situation? Yeah, no, he's a little bit tired on fuel, just because he's using a bit more fuel now that he's not in, in uh, getting a tow from other cars. But he's fine. We've just given him a target number, and he's driving to that, no problem, and maintaining position. Good luck, mate. He's remember, been chased down by Lee Holdsworth in the Merc. And remember also exactly. that uh, John Webb in position three at the moment, car number 19. Uh, He's going to have to stop again in the not-too-distant future to, in order to get home, so that'll take him out of sequence. It's been a great run. Has this effort run. of the Irwin Tools, Mercedes-Benz of Craig Baird and Lee Holdsworth, remember Bairdo turned it around on the final lap of his qualifying sprint for the grid, which meant that Lee had to jump in from way down the field, and they ended up qualifying in 19th, and here they are in their first ever endurance race in the Erebus Motorsport Mercedes-Benz E63. And he's pestering Will Davison second in the championship for a spot on the podium in the first enduro of the year. I saw Lee this morning uh, just prior to the warm-up and he's got the family here, wife Alana and 
baby Ava. So uh, he's been through some terrible trials and tribulations, been lots of did not finish results. And there's that stop that I spoke of before for John Webb. So that takes him out of third position while they bring on some more fuel and tyres. That brings Will Davison up into third. Lee to fourth, James to fifth. It's James Courtney. And that gap's back to 2.8. We said before it was 3.9 from Lowndes to Wink Cup. So another second out of that lead. Wink Cup continues to draw closer to Craig Lowndes. Will Davison and Holdsworth. We've just seen that battle. Holdsworth looks like for pace, he's slightly better off, but Davison struggling for fuel economy. Midfield here, Todd Kelly having a think or two about having a crack at Scott Pye and thought the better of it as we go on board with Chaz Mostert, who's in 15th spot. His day could have been so much better with Dale Wood heading towards the end now at the Sandow 500. Welcome back. We are on lap 135 out of 161, and you're riding with the enforcer, Russell Ingle, who is pushing hard to get a top 10 finish here. He's 11th. Ahead of him is Shane Van Gisbergen. Craig Lowndes leads the race by 2.3 seconds over Jamie Wincup. Will Davison is third. What a fight back that has been. Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird fourth for Erebus AMG. James Courtney is fifth. Coulthard, McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Reynolds, Van Gisbergen and Russell Ingle.
Yeah, just sitting with his teammate at the moment, taking a look at what's happening. And Ryan Briscoe, uh, great to be with teamed up with Russell Ingle, I guess. I know you've watched him race for a long time. Yeah, it's great. Uh, he's he's uh, definitely been the enforcer today, and uh, we've got a top 10 car now, so uh, hopefully he can get Van Gisbergen. But I've had a blast. Um, had a really good run today, and led my first ever laps in a V8 supercar, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, Hopefully we come out of today with a good result, move on to Bathurst. Do you enjoy this coming home from India and having a run back in V8 supercars? It's great. I mean, any excuse to come home and race these things is awesome. So, um, unfortunately I have to travel back and forth because I'm racing next weekend and then I'm racing either side of Bathurst. So uh, it's going to be a busy one, but um, it's great. These guys really look after me. It's great to be racing for super cheap. Um, it's definitely going to be a big race for us at Bathurst. and. Uh, if anyone can do it, Russell can, and I hope I can do my part. Great to have you, Ryan. Good luck to you and the Enforcer. Thank you. Cheers. He's at Austin, Texas uh, next weekend, and then he's racing in Virginia. This is in the American Le Mans series, and uh, Russell's having a big go here at the moment with Shane Van Gisbergen for this 10th position. Then he's back for Bathurst, and then he goes back to Road Atlanta for the Petit Le Mans. It's been a heck of a season for Ryan Briscoe. A lot of miles, a lot of miles in race cars and aeroplanes. It'll be his third attempt at Bathurst. It'll be Russell's 22nd. And Ryan's spoken about how a long, long time ago when he was up there as a little kid in his karting days and he was watching Russell and he went down to the Castrol tent and met him. He's just been testing at Indianapolis in an Indy car as well on the potential road course configurations there. Rusty, <laughs> big sprint car action through turn one. He's got the eyes on at the moment. So that was wild. He caught it. He used the curbing to actually correct the car and get it straightened up again. And uh, Ryan's mum and dad, Jeff and Mariana, here this weekend as well. It's a popular figure. Remember that he also had a testing role with Toyota in Formula One, so he's a guy with a fantastic pedigree. Great to see an Australian doing so well overseas. Last lap around, Russell had a huge dive through the left-hand side of the super cheap Commodore at those witches hats at the end of turn six. And Van Gisbergen has the elbows out. Guys, Garth Tander just getting back out onto the track after they changed the battery, but just look at him and we were just about to have a chat in the garage. You can see the disappointment in his eyes. This has been a, a hard day for Garth Tander. It's a hard two days because yesterday was terrible when he didn't get the car off the line in neutral. And it's just gone bad to worse and beyond. So Matt Crawford, who engineers this car, is going to get down the inside. Yes! Good move. Very good move. Right on the braking limit. He's just squeaked past Shane Van Gisbergen. So Matt's had his own difficulties. Uh, he's had a youngster in hospital overnight, and he didn't uh, get to bed until 3 o'clock this morning. That's not the way to go racing this weekend. So our thoughts are with the Crawford family. Matt looks after Russell Ingle. What's up? Uh, great to see you down here. And uh, you've been around Australia long enough now, not a long time, but to know this is a tough, tough gig. Oh, it absolutely is. Very tough, but great course. Uh, great race today, even uh, though it has been a, a bit tough for some of the drivers out there. But uh, I always love coming to this this track. And, and as far as your V8 supercar involvement with people like me with blue blood in our veins, we're pleased to see you're not going anywhere in a hurry. <laughs> we're still talking to the to the team and uh, looking forward to being able to jointly make some announcement at some point in the future. Great news. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Bob Graciano, the president of Ford Australia, in the garage here, and he's looking on as Will Davison continues to hold out the Irwin racer of Lee Holdsworth. Remember, Will's playing a really tricky fuel game here. He needs to somehow keep the pace on, but not burn too much fuel, drive to a number and get to the end. In 2009, when Will and Garth Tander won Bathurst, Lee Holdsworth finished on the podium with his old mate, Michael Caruso. The shot that you saw of Will plummeting down the hill there, you can still see there's a lot of dust and oil debris, a lot of oil mist has come out the back of that car from whatever the source may be. It doesn't look good and it appears to have got worse in the last 10 or 20 laps. So all these dramas that the leading teams have had across the course of the day have ironically managed to even themselves out, level themselves out and now it's just a sprint to the finish. Lowndes leading the way. Can he get his ninth 
500 win and equal the great Peter Brock. Live and uninterrupted to the finish now at the Wilson Security Sandown 500. Just under 20 laps remaining. Red Bull Racing Australia in the position. However, on the track, traffic is going to be a big issue as we go riding with Jamie Wincup, second behind Craig Lowndes, who has cars ahead of him. And he's now just half a second behind. So all the margin has evaporated. Wincup is back in the game. He's in the tow right behind Lowndes and only a moment ago Mark Dutton said to him I want you to be mega safe around Craig and the code there is do not have an accident at this point in the day look at that so Lowndes now comes up on the rear of Rick Kelly the Jack Daniels car so the tweak they made to that car has worked pretty nicely I'd say for car one it was worth sacrificing a couple of extra seconds in the pit to get him back on the racetrack. So Rick's just come out of the throttle. That was good etiquette there. He just come out of the throttle gently and let them both by, which is exactly the right thing to do if you're going to go a lap down. So well done. James got about two to three tenths of a second per lap on Craig at the moment, it seems, and it's consistent. They've also said to him along the way, be careful with the tyres here. We need them at the end. And I just wonder whether some of the pace is the call that we heard very early in the stint for Craig to save fuel. So maybe just the way they've got his engine trimmed in his car, it's just a little bit thirstier at the moment. And when you're in Jamie's position now, when you've got the tow, you can come out of the throttle and you actually get a fuel saving from being where he is. So he might be in a little bit less trouble 
than Craig as a consequence. You normally don't see a huge variation in speed between them. So for it to be consistently that tenth and a half to two tenths every lap, so it makes me think there might be something else to look for. So they're tucked in behind car number 21 at the moment, and it's David Wall. It's marked up in the background. So then he just moved it over, not just to move it away from the heat that comes from the car in front, but he moved it over just to see who was in front of Craig, because when you're right up behind, Lowndes very sideways off turn one. Roland Dane, if I could just grab a quick word. I spoke to you earlier in the day, mate, and uh, I actually thought it was going to be hard road back from here. You said it wasn't over. It's not over, but now how do you manage this little debacle going on? Uh, look, it looks OK at the moment, but uh, still plenty can happen with 16, 17 laps to go, and uh, we're just trying to allow them to have a good a good fight, but we don't want them to run out of fuel or tyres, so you've got to be a bit careful. And just quickly, mate, from a personal viewpoint, how have you enjoyed backing up here in the front seat this weekend, eh? Uh, ask me a bit later. <laughs> 17 laps. 17 yeah. laps. So David Wall does the job and moves aside to let these two guys duke it out. Did you see the glimpse that we saw there a moment ago of uh, Mark Dutton? He was barely breathing, had a grimace on his face. It's very tense. It's OK for Roland there at the moment conducting the orchestra, thinking about it from a team perspective. But for either of the boys, either side of him, for Jeremy Moore or for Mark Dutton, it's a big fingernail biter for them at the moment. Look at him. Breathe, Dutto. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. I mean, it's stressful. That both guys are in contention for the championship. This is one of the biggest races in the country. 300 points on offer to win it. They both had their dramas through the day. And with 15 laps to go, they've still got to be able to organise themselves to not take each other out and finish where they are. Van Gisbergen disappears off the road at turn two. And uh, Mark's just also been back on the phone to Jamie and said, the last couple of laps you've given me great fuel saving, well done. So that might be a little bit along the lines that you were talking about of the fuel saving when you tuck behind the other car. You can just ease the throttle a little bit, save a couple of hundred mil of fuel here and there. It does make a big difference. Mark Winterbottom was the fastest car on the previous lap, so he's in eighth, but is fighting back hard. That was a 10-4. 29 seconds from the lead. In focus they come. Eight time 500 winner Craig Lowndes. He's won five of those here. He's actually won five of the last eight and been on the podium in every single one. Jamie Wincup's won one of these in 2007 at this circuit with the man he's trying to beat today. Triple Eight Race Engineering that operate the Red Bull cars. Ten years in Australian V8 supercar racing. And Roland Dane and his senior staff and his sponsors at Red Bull got together a large group of industry journalists during the week and had a dinner in Melbourne to celebrate. Noted uh, motoring journalist Paul Gove is actually writing a book about the history of the team and they have a pedigree that extends through Europe as well in British Touring Car Championship racing. They've been very successful here in the last decade. It took them a little while to click all the pieces of the puzzle together, but it's been a very fruitful period in the careers of Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes. This would be, by far and away, Erebus Motorsports' greatest moment in the main game with Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird still trying to chip away at Will Davis and Lee for a spot on that podium, but currently in fourth, that's the best race effort when you think that this is effectively the second biggest race of the year and the first time that they've tackled this enduro format in the brand new car. Well, that's something to feel very proud of. So inside 15 laps remaining. Lowndes started third. Win Cup. This car started on the front row of the grid. Had a pit lane penalty for spinning wheels after a chaotic driver change. Dodo Insurance Commodore Dean Fiore now gives them room. Don't discount a mistake here, guys. This is These guys are driving these cars as hard as you possibly can. They both want to win this. Although they're teammates, there's as much competition within the team as there is with anybody else. 
They've been given real orders about not running into each other, but don't worry, they're, they're driving the cars like qualifying laps. Right about that, and it means something to them. Big difference between the middle step on the podium and either side. And did you see the long, hard look yeah. that Craig had in the mirror coming off turn nine? You want to have a very good look at exactly what Jamie was doing. What did his drive look like? How's he positioned? Has that gap been maintained? Because you begin to measure it in your mind in, in millimetres. You know precisely where the other guy is. Craig Baird down here looking at the screen, mate. You're as focused as what you were in the car. I can see some good numbers being punched out there. Can you get a podium here? Oh, look, we're certainly trying. Look, yesterday was a tough day, testing day, and um, we probably didn't expect to be that high up. The boys have done a fantastic job around here with strategy and bits and pieces. I was pretty happy with my first sort of double stint and uh, did what we have to. He's got good speed. He's, uh, you know, he's there. He, he needs a little bit of luck, but uh, he hasn't had any all year, so maybe this weekend. Well, actually, look, uh, a bit of drama there, but overall, look, I think the uh, performance by the three stars here this weekend generally has been very, very encouraging. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Across all three cars, practices, qualifying sessions, and now the race, it's um, it's a big step up for them, so a lot of hard work, and eventually it's got to pay off, I guess. Good luck, buddy. Cheers, mate. Beto gets on the aeroplane tomorrow with Louise and the kids, and off to Singapore they go, and uh, he's racing in the Career Cup race alongside the Formula One event. Singapore Grand Prix next weekend, so he's got a big international requirement. Uh, he also just cleaned up the 12-hour race in Sepang in Malaysia just recently, a couple of weeks ago. So he's got a lot on his plate, Craig Baird, getting in and out of lots of different vehicles. Lowndes has got that thing absolutely wrung out at the moment. He's skating right across the top of the kerb on the exit at Turn 1. He ran wide then. That was a mistake. He turned it in, didn't quite make the apex, ran right out to the outside kerb, lost quite a lot of time. So, as you can see, both guys using every little bit of road. This is the run up behind there, you get the toe. You can't do much about it if you're not right up in behind, not coming onto the straight. You see Lounge use more road around the left also. So look, Jamie's got the pace. What can he do with it? How much risk does he want to take on here? Gee, we cup got a little bit loose there too. It's lightening up. Look at the intensity of this. <laughs> so on the right, oh, Jeremy Moore. That's the mistake. Oh, and that's there goes the mistake. Wing Cup on the inside onto the main straight. And he will take over the lead of this race from Craig Lowndes. Craig was on the ragged edge. We saw it from back here one lap ago, 3.1 kilometres ago at turn one. So when you're driving the car that hard with nothing in reserve, you've only got to have the slightest little slip. So here it is again in replay. Last two corners. Craig actually did a nice job of guiding it over the top of the kerb there. And then as soon as he turned it in, turn in oversteer, he would have been carrying the brake and had the nose loaded. And he knew he was shot at that point. And uh, that actually ended up being very easy for Jamie. So watch this. On board with Wink Cup. So you see Craig battling to get it turned in to the right. So then he's loaded, ran in there fast. So he got away. As soon as he turned the other way, and he turned with his foot on the brake pedal. Exactly. So the nose was loaded. It was actually, he was so quick through the right-hander, through turn 11, it probably hurt him. He actually yep. carried so much speed through turn 11, he couldn't recover it. And the reason that they are pressing on so hard, I mean, everybody wants to win this race. It's a prestigious event. As Matt said before, arguably the number two event in the country in terms of what we perceive it as in the history and tradition of this sport. But there's a 24-point difference between first and second. I mean, this is championship stuff. Yeah, it's worth the fight. And uh, for this event and for the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000 and then off to the Gold Coast, it's 300 points and a winner-take-all. There's no other race that you get to play with and, and to sort yourself out here or at Bathurst, you get a couple of them on the Gold Coast. So you really got to make it work. So this is the margin back to Will Davis, and he's 20 seconds from the lead. And... Uh, it's Lee Holdsworth in behind. Now, interestingly, Dutton was told, that was telling uh, uh, Jamie then, I want you to be very careful with those tyres and with fuel. So, you know, now he's going to have to ease it out. So Mark Dutton just asking Jamie to ease back. And the margin between Davison and Holdsworth in the battle for third is shrinking as well. Lee Holdsworth has done fastest lap times the last two laps. So it's down to point seven of a second. There's a change there. Fabian Coulthard with Mark Winterbottom, who's been on a flyer at the end. And we'll have a look on the inside to get the spot back. That's Frosty to sixth. 
So that was a pass both ways. <laughs> and a repass. James Courtney up ahead in fifth. Mm. How's that for going with the punches all afternoon? Because they've copped quite a few. Yeah, so James is 27 seconds off the lead of the race. So a 1.10.6 last time, a 1.12.2. That's the difference between Wing Cup and Lowndes, and the lead is now four seconds at the front. Meanwhile, Davison versus Holdsworth, 1.11.03 versus a 1.11.06. That's Jamie just putting a little squeeze on everyone there. It's, it's, you know, let's get, yeah. get this into you. That's right, exactly. Come on, that's, Lee. That's, that's a lot a of smoke. Brief. That's getting worse. Yeah. yeah. Remember I made yeah. reference to it earlier that it had a, a lot of oil mist. And there's very much uh, evidence of it on the rear of the car. So Tim's just talking to Grant McPherson, engineer on his left there. I'll be monitoring the telemetry in that car in case there are any telltale signs. But it's breathing pretty heavily at the moment. This could put an Erebus Motorsport car on the podium in the hands of Lee Holtzworth. How cool would that be? First time a Mercedes-Benz has ever been on the podium if it happens. First time a Merck has been in the Sandown 500 for 25 years and their nervous thoughts at Ford Performance Racing. Here's the view out the back of Will Davison's car. Talk about coughing and spluttering, and look at it. It's gasping. And Lee Holdsworth will like what he sees. Tim Edwards, um, a nervous Tim Edwards, mate. I saw it in your last pit stop there, a lot of oil on the back of the car. We can see it fairly bellowing out there now. Well, what's the telemetry telling us? Uh, yeah, it's telling us we've got quite high gearbox. Uh, temperature and low pressure so we'll just have to uh seven laps see if we can hold out and i guess with the car of the future we haven't had this car long enough to know what to do here and what you really can do or what to expect yeah absolutely so it's all new to us i mean you know, we're a bit nervous last night so we put a new transaxle in the car all new rear uprights so um, you know best prepared but we'll wait and see as you say you know it's high temperature low pressure it's never a good sign all right fingers crossed mate except lee holsworth's Darren Just Jones uh, looks after sub-assembly at Ford Performance Racing and uh, he'll be biting his nails there at the moment. It's probably making a bit of temperature and things are going blue down there at the moment in the, that region of the car. They've just decided that if they have to, they'll just weld it all together. It doesn't matter about the temperature. Just on the overall issue of reliability and taking these new generation cars into this distance for the first time ever, out of the 28 cars that we started with, 26 are still competing. Scott Pye in the garage and Ashley Walsh, of course, his day was done. So given the chaotic nature of what's unfolded over the last 150-odd laps, that's a big win for reliability across all four manufacturers. No doubt. And the team's done a great job within the four manufacturers to get these cars home. As Tim Edwards just said, then we're pioneering in the first year of the new generation cars. And as I said, it fantastic job from all the engineers and technicians in pit lane to have that level of durability from the cars in the first year. Mark Dutton also just said to Jamie, given the margin you've now got 6.7 seconds at his right at this moment, stay well away from that curve at the end of the back straight where those bolts can protrude if the hats get knocked down. So now he just wants him to go into ultra conservative mode. So he's in the mid 11s, Craig's in the mid 12s. This is the area that he was talking about here at the, on the left-hand apex at the end of the back straight at Turn 5. It's Alex Davison in the foreground, car number 18. He's 15 at the moment, so it's right there. Stay well away from that kerb. So Lowndes has actually lost quite a lot of pace. He has 7.3 seconds now. Long way, isn't it? He was the mid-12 that last lap for him. Sometimes it's harder to drive the car at nine tenths like this than it was when they were really wringing their necks a little while ago because both they were really on it both of them were driving the cars with millimeter perfection and now when you've got to back it off a little bit use the look after the fuel on the tires and don't use the same level of, a, of personal exertion and effort sometimes it's easier to make a mistake okay if you want to just lean over and ask Crompo what that was like mate he drove at nine tenths for most of his career it wasn't that hard <laughs> like uh, i have to stand in between them 
Will Davison did a 10-8 on the last lap, just to change the subject. Craig Lowndes did a 12-3 and Wind Cup an 11-5. So Will's still got pace and Holdsworth did a 10-9. So Will can't afford to back off because of the threat from behind. But the rising temperature, I mean, that's a really tough equation. So he's just got to keep bringing the neck of this thing and to heck with the reliability. Did a good job of that. Well done. Well sidestepped. Can I do tap longer? Nicely done. Ross Stone, I hate uh, interrupting you at this point, mate. I know you're a little fidgety at the minute. Um, any feedback from Lee we got with regards? We know there's an oil drama or a diff drama uh, with the Ford Performance Racing Vehicle. Yeah, it just it's really um, starting to get slippery. You can't, it's starting to affect the windscreen. And he, he's had to back out of it, um, so anything could happen in the past few laps when he's going to give it a crack. Is it to the point that they should get a technical black flag, Ross, or not that bad? Well... I, I don't know. I don't make that call, but um, it would suit me at the moment. If I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it would. And just quickly, mate, it has been a stellar effort because you still have got a little bit of work to do on fuel economy. So you've had to sit stationary in the pit lane in pit stops for longer than the field. So all in all, a really splendid effort, whatever the outcome here. Yeah, and um, we'll have to do some more work before Bathurst now. And, yeah, you know, depending what happens on the Z70 deal and... Uh, I'm sure one way or another we can improve a bit more. All right, mate, get back to it. Could be a bit of gamesmanship coming into play here because Will Davison is coming up on the lap traffic of car 47, Tim Slade, the other car out of the Erebus Motorsport Mercedes crew. So that may just give Lee Holdsworth a little bit of a kick along behind car number six. And the last time we're on board with Will, you would have heard him radio back. How are we going with this fuel situation? So he's still worried about whether he's got enough gas to get to the end. Been a terrific fight back given what they've had to endure. After starting from pole position, the double stacking absolutely killed him. Will was furious in the garage and didn't hold back and letting everybody know about that. It's a prickly time too because he's on the verge possibly of signing a new deal with that team. So once he managed to get into the car and get on with the job of driving, that's what he had to focus on and now he's holding down third spot in the 500 of 2013. All the key runners, the top four were in the low 11s that lap, so Craig Lowndes got his mojo back on that lap. He had a couple there where he was in the mid-12s. Winterbottom was fastest, 10-7. Austin Van Gisbergen. No battling for 12th and 13th. Pit lane drive through penalty for Chaz Mostert earlier in the day for that out of control arrival into the lane and went across the line at very high speed at that pit lane entry. This is going to hurt Lee Holdsworth. It hurt him a lot then, didn't it? Yeah, that walk at the top of the hill. He's taking that gap out to about 1.2 seconds by the time that evens. That's from 0.7 of a second. So you can see the fumes coming from the back of car six, but Lee got caught with the traffic. And this is Mostert having a big moment down at Dandenong Road with the wheel locked, heading down the inside of Van Gisberg, and he can't get the wheel unlocked. It's unweighted. He's trying to turn it in. Catches a lot of curb. They'll make contact off the back of this. Slow-mo shot is just fantastic. Remember, this is a brand new car for Red Bull Racing Australia and Jamie Wincup. He had a nightmare last event at Winton. Teams up again with Paul Dumbrell. They finished third in this event last year and went on to win Bathurst. The Red Bull team kept both co-drivers exactly the same, the only team to do so. Provisionally in the championship, this is a really big boost for Jamie Wincup. 300 points on the line today, and it moves Craig Lowndes back up to second if they can keep this order running. 28th race of the championship. Possibly Jamie Wincup's ninth victory of the season. For Red Bull, potentially their 12th. Those odds are pretty good relative to the number of outings this year. Red Bull have had 25 podiums to this point in the championship. Brad Jones racing 17, Ford Performance racing 16 across the drivers in their teams. When, so, I, when you go back through the tape of this event, and 
you find the laps that Jamie Wincup did just before the last stop, when he was still tucked in behind Craig Lowndes, he was doing those qualifying style laps that they ask him to do, and he delivers to absolute perfection. Most times when it's needed, he's won the Sandown 500 once before with Craig Lowndes back in 2007. But at the time when his championship needs it the most, Jamie Wincup and Paul Dumbrell celebrate Triple Eight Racing's 10th anniversary in this country with a big win, the oh. Sandown 500. Way to go, fellas. All yours, guys, all yours. Wow. More than eight Mate, seconds good, uh, behind is Craig good, uh, Lowndes making it a 1-2 for Red Bull. And here's Will Davison. With Steve Owen started on pole, he's on the podium, and Lee Holdsworth gets Mercedes-Benz highest ever finish in the V8 supercars of fourth. Something in that for everybody. They've witnessed some pretty crazy at times racing across the course of the day. These new generation cars have gone the distance for the first time in their life in 2013. And this brand spanker that they christened Liz has delivered beautifully for Wing Cup and Dumbrell. Even with pit lane dramas and Chaz Mostert ends up in the grass at the final turn. He was looking at a top 15 spot here. Remember, he'd been dicing with Shane Van Gisbergen, but he got a tap from Shane's sister car at John O'Webb at the last turn. What was that about? It's about ugliness in the end. So the second time that Jamie Wincup has won a 500 race. The first time that Paul Dumbrell put Let me check with the, the 500 trophy on his shelf. Now they're going through the fun part of the debrief it's with Mark Dutton. It's a good problem to have, isn't it, trying to figure out where you where did do your burnout? Burn <laughs> yes. Well, there'd be times throughout the course of this day where they thought that that burnout would never be happening. I'll ask you to get back, mate. But it is now. Well, when those wheels were spinning in the pit stop, Matt, I thought for sure that was the end. We were calling it at that stage that it needed a safety car for him to get back into it. But what he did was got his head down and did some absolutely superb laps. It was a great battle with his teammate, Craig Lowndes. Remember, they finished off the 2012 season of endurance with victory at Mount Panorama, Wing Cup and Dumbrell, and they come here to the first one of 2013 and the first event in the Pertec Enduro Cup to go with the dramas of the day and finish at the front ahead of his teammate Craig Lowndes and Warren Luff. So again, Craig Lowndes in the last nine straight 500 events, either here or at Phillip Island, has either won it or been on the podium. <laughs> Paul Dumbrell, very, very good drive today too. That was excellent. There's room for two at the top. Wing Cup and Dumbrell, the Wilson Security Sandown 500 champions. Jamie's boarding at Paul's place while they're in Victoria, so the team that stays together wins together. Well, I we might just have a quick chat to Paul Dumbrell while Jamie's getting his helmet off. Paul, we spoke earlier in the day and we weren't sure this was going to finish this way, but well done. Yeah, who would have thought uh, the Sandown 500 turns out like this? So, uh, now we made it pretty hard for ourselves uh, there midway through the race, but uh, shows how much of a jet the car was. Jado was able to drive through, and uh, great strategy by Dado and RD and the boys. So, hey, we'll look forward to this one. Oh, well done, PD. Let's get to Jamie now. Jamie, congratulations. What a way to bounce back from Winton. Yeah, that was uh, that was hard work. We um, we elected not to run the cool suit, so. Um, there was no driver aids, but um, we did it the hard way. But um, we, we had a test day last week where, where uh, we had a tough day. So um, 
Good old to Lounty and uh, and his engineer. You know they uh, they're very much part of this one too. You know it's a shame uh, shame one of us had to win one to come second. But in saying that, I've been on the receiving end of uh, if exactly the same scenario three or four times uh, in the 500. So um, it's good to get one back. Well, thanks for the great jewel and well done on the win, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, let's get to Craig Lowndes. Amazing performance by Lowndes. He just loves these endurance races. Lowndes, it's fair to say this is your bread and butter, these endurance races. Yeah, Barretts, I think it was, uh, you know, look, it was a good battle out, um, you know, towards the closing stages. Obviously, yeah, uh, Jamie had a good car at the end and uh, then we got told to bring it home. So uh, we had a big gap. No use uh, fighting him. Yeah. And Luffy, great to team up with this bloke once again. Yeah, look, it was a fantastic day. Obviously, I uh, would like to go one better, but uh, who knows, maybe in three weeks we can uh, stand on that top step. Yeah, look forward to seeing that, boys. Well done. Enjoy the podium. Yeah, Thanks, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And Will Davison, a great effort by Steve Owen and Will Davison. Will, we're worried about you getting home with fuel, but you made it okay in the end. I think the fuel was the least of the worries in the end. Um, miracle the car made it home. We actually had no oil in the transaxle for the last 10 or so laps. It's running at 190, 200 degrees. Like, the noises inside that thing were unbelievable. I can't believe it made it home. So, um, you know, we've salvaged some points. Listen, there's not too much else exciting about our day. We... Uh, yeah, we got the real raw end of a deal early in the race, uh, dropped us right back, and um, I just kept my head down and tried to keep positive, and, um, you know, it was hard. We put Steve back in the pack, and, you know, naturally some damage happens to the car when you're back there, and uh, we got some damage here, and but we made it home. So, at um, the end of the day, bring on Bathurst, good points, thanks to Stevie, and, uh, you know, we're, we're strong. Steve, that's a, that is a great result, though, to get on the podium here at this race. There were so many breathing down your neck as well all day. Yeah, we're looking pretty good at the first stint, but as Will said, we, uh, we probably just got the uh, rough end of the pineapple a little bit and ended up back in the pack, and it's never good around this track, but uh, Will did a great job, got us back up the front and, and did a great job of bringing the car home when it was clearly wounded, so great result. Tremendous efforts, boys. Enjoy the podium. And I just want to say hello to Margie, my grandma at home. <laughs> good on you, Will. Thanks, guys. Well done. Now, a couple of guys really keen to grab a chat with. I happen to be standing here when you went across the line, mate. This was like you had just won Bathurst. It's been a tough year for you personally, but what a great, great outcome for this team, Lee. Oh, like, oh after the year we've had, this is like a win, it really is. Um, it's so nice to be able to pay the boys back, you know, from all the hard work. We've just been getting drilled, kicked in the guts every time we go out on the racetrack. So to have a really quick car, Brad gave me an awesome car. The boys did an awesome job during the uh, during the race, as well as Beto here. Man, he uh, <laughs> carved them up at the start there. And Beto, you must be looking to Bathurst on the uh, back of this one, mate. Oh, I look always, but, um, you know, this is sort of the platform to build on, and the team's just been working so hard. I, you know, I'm just coming at the, the lunchtime stint, as I always say, but um, these guys have been working hard. Lee's had it hard all year. And um, as we know, mate, we've all been around long enough. Luck turns around, and it has, and um, that's what you need to build on. It was so good to see. Now, I want to chase that bloke over in the background there, Ross Stone, because there is no greater indicator of how hard these people have worked than to see uh, Ross Stone, my mate, a little bit emotional there, which is usually Jimmy Stone territory. But I think that's an indicator, Ross, just how hard a road this has been, how hard this whole team has worked, and that was like a race win. Yeah, yeah, it was for us. You know, um, it's been such a big project. It has. Really tight timelines. Yep. And then, you know, the engines, when we first got them, weren't where they needed to be. You know, and some of that was the timelines. Yep. But um, we're getting there now. Well, I know you're not a big celebrator, but I just go up having a few drinks and enjoy, mate. Yeah, thanks, Marco. Yep, the best performance for Erebus Motorsport Mercedes in the V8 Supercar category. Fourth position for Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird. Lee's had six DNFs so far this season. His best before this one was 13th, so he's had a really tough run. Good effort from James Courtney and Greg Murphy to fight back. Chas Mostert would finish up as the last car on the lead lap in 14th after that tangle on the end. And there are only two DNFs. Scotty Pye and Paul Morris and Tim Blanchard actually didn't get a start because Ash Walsh found the fence up there at turn six in his opening stint. So race 28, done and won by Jamie Wincup and Paul Dumbrell. Let's go to the podium with Brett's. The Wilson Security Sandown 500. Would you please congratulate our winning drivers in first place, Jamie Wincup and Paul Dumbrell, Red Bull Racing Australia. In second place, Red Bull Racing Australia's Craig Lowndes and Warren Luff. And in third place for Pepsi Max crew, FBR Ford, Will Davison and Steve Owen. Representing the winning team at Red Bull Racing Australia is Roland Dane. Making the presentation of our third place trophy is Leanne Turner, the Chief Executive Officer of MTAA Super.
making the presentation of the second place trophies is Stephen Dutton, the Chief Executive Officer, Pertec Fluid Transfer Solutions. To present to the winning team is Paul Brazier, National Security Manager from our naming rights sponsor, Wilson Security. And making the presentation to our winning drivers is John McMillan, the Chief Executive Officer from our naming rights sponsor, Wilson Security. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 Wilson Security Sandown 500 race 28 winners. So Paul Dumbrell yet again on the winners list in the V8 Supercar Championship. Jamie Wincup, his ninth win of the season the 73rd of his career. They come good at the right time of the year. And it was absolutely crucial for Wing Cup's championship chase.